Okay, hi everyone. This is live. It's 7 p.m. on Tuesday, December 29th, 2020. So, I decided to do a live frequently asked questions about foiling so that everyone can understand the differences between all of the different foiling companies and manufacturers out there. So, we're just waiting for some subscribers to jump on. I see the notification just went out and we'll go from there. Hi Noelle. Hi Sally. Make sure you have live chat on. Hi Chow. Thank you. Um, I've decided I probably need to break this up into two piles. Toner foiling and hot foiling. Everybody grab pen and paper because you are going to be schooled. Take lots and lots of notes. Let me know if you guys see Fix. She sent me a little piece of happy mail, so I want to tell her thank you. All right. Hello, everybody. Noelle, you keep that. You keep that. Nobody wants any of that. Uh-uh. Nope. Not here. Not at all. Hello, Cindy. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Eileen. Melanie, Michelle, Noelle, Tracy, Angelique, Brittany, Sally. Hello, foiling snobs. Cynthia, Stacy, Maureen. Hello, Margaret from Australia. Hello, Marguerite. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Judy. Melody. Cheeky Rod. Cheeky Rod. Your new Cheeky Rod. Are you cheeky, Rod? <laughs> Sherry got the mail. No problem, Sherry. Sherry won uh, two prizes, right, Sherry? Hi, Diane. Hi, Sandy. All right, so I hope, number one, that you guys have pen and paper handy, and number two, that you have some questions handy, because... I want to just go through answering basic questions here. I'm not going to be demonstrating a lot. I just want to, uh, you guys to understand foiling a little bit of the way that I understand it. The majority of the information I'm going to be giving you guys tonight is for U.S. residents. If I am uh, speaking to other folks, I know there's a lot of you in the U.K., a ton of you in Canada and Australia. I will try to help out as best as I can but the majority of my information is for products that are easily available in the UK. I mean, in the US. <laughs> Hello, Katrina from Australia. Katrina, you are lucky because we do have a wonderful supplier in Australia. Hello, Carol Green Fairy. Carol Green is the uh, fairy fairy. Oh, you know what, Carol? Carol, Carol. I can actually bring your little sample. 
samples in here. Perfect. Thanks for showing up, Carol. All right, we have 57 people on. Hello, Anna. Hi, Melody. Hi, Mary. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Maureen. <laughs> Anna says, Chow, how are you feeling? She's feeling pregnant. <laughs> So mail is still slow for me, but I will tell you I got two packages in the mail today from UPS and they were both sent two days ago. So UPS for the win. USPS, pfft, not so much right now. I'm still waiting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine packages now from the Postal Service. Secret Sister, hello Secret Sister. Are you my Secret Sister? So we got and secret sister. Hello, Kim. Hello, Mashiko. We are all doing well. Mashiko, I, um, Ryan got his little package from you, so thank you so much. All right. Hello, Nancy. All right. Yeah, Elizabeth, she said people are getting upset because of the, the postal service. She's looking into new uh, vendors, postage vendors. All right. Okay, so we have 66 folks watching. I don't want to uh, wait too long. What I would like to do is start by explaining the basics between different types of foils and the foiling companies. And then I will talk about products because there's a lot of products out on the market and um, it would be very, very helpful if you guys do take notes. We will post this video into the Foiling Snobs Club. So I'm going to assume most of you on here are in the Foiling Snobs Club. And if you're not in the Foiling Snobs Club, please come and join us. The Foiling Snobs Club is our little Facebook home, Foiling Snobs Club, where we talk about everything crafting, but... Um, it's a support group for foiling um, mostly, but we do card making, we do stamping, we do arts and crafts, we do painting, we do alcohol inks, we do everything. But please join us at the Foiling Snobs Club if you are new to foiling. Maybe you're catching my video six months from now. Maybe you're catching this video after Christmas because someone gave you a mink machine or a foil press machine or a go pressing machine and you you don't know what to do and you saw the video, okay? So... Join us at the Foiling Snobs Club. Currently, we have over 1,800 members. We're growing every day, and it's a very loving, supportive group. And if you have a question, we're going to answer your question. We're going to help you out. Okay. So, hi, Lise. Um, hi, Shane. All right. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. So, let me talk about, first of all, the basics to foiling is there are two types of foiling. Whatever foiling you're going to do is falling into one of these two categories, okay? Okay. The most popular one is what's called toner foiling or mink foiling. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to list the name of the companies, but you'll be able to again look this information up on our group at the Foiling Snobs Club. But I want to show you how all of these different <laughs> foils show up. Okay, so. What is toner foiling, okay? Toner foiling is the most prevalent type of foiling because it is number one, the easiest, and number two, it is the least expensive. Wait a minute, I'm out of focus. Looks in focus to me, hold on. Let me wipe the camera here. Hey, better? Can you see that this was $1.99? Maybe the foil's making it out of focus. <laughs> okay, so. As I was saying, toner foiling, yeah, it's probably all the foiling reflecting off of it. Toner foiling is the most prevalent in foiling because um, it's the easiest. It's also the least expensive depending on how involved you want to get in it. So here is the basics of toner foiling. 
What is toner? Okay. Toner, most of you have heard, is the black particles that come out of a laser printer. So that's number one. It must be laser printed, okay? It cannot be inkjet printed. If you don't know the difference between an inkjet and a laser printer, an inkjet printer is what most families have in their homes. You have four to, I would say four to six cartridges in your inkjet printer. Your inkjet printer is little vials of ink that are going to spit ink particles all over your paper and make pretty pictures, um, you know, documents, whatever you need to print. Okay, so if you are putting in a ink cartridge into your printer, you can literally see the liquid ink. That is an inkjet printer. That is what 99.9% .9 of households have, an inkjet printer. What we need to use here is a laser printer. And what a laser printer does is similar to a Xerox machine where it uses a toner. And a toner cartridge you cannot miss. Toner cartridges are very large. And inside is a powder or the toner. That powder then is run through the machine and heat dried to print your image. So when it is heat dried, this is basically microscopic pieces of plastic that stick to um, the paper, okay? How toner or mink foiling works is when you put this through your either super hot laminator or your mink machine, this black part will melt from heat. And then when you lay your foil on top of it, the foil will stick to it, and when you release your foil, whatever is black will now be covered in foil, okay? Now, here's the tricky part. So number one is you must have laser toner printed images. So you guys are going to now ask, where do I get them, okay? So you need to get them in a couple of places. Number one, you can print your own. All of these I have printed myself. Here you can see I bought a laser printer. You can get a laser printer for around $100, a little bit more right now, just because everybody's staying at home. And then I foiled it. So here you can see what it looks like after. So before and after, I print my own investing in a laser printer. Okay, now, not everybody wants to invest in a laser printer. I can understand that. So I'm going to tell you a couple of companies that you can purchase pre-printed toner designs. The first one is in Australia. This is our company, Crafty Krita in Australia. They are our Australian distributor for foil and foil art, okay? They have wonderful designs on their webpage. It's craftycrita.com. We do have a 5% discount code. I believe it's Nancy Stamps 05. Nancy Stamps 05 will give you 5% off. Please remember that because they are in Australia, there is a little bit of a wait for shipping and also the dollars will convert over from Australian dollars to US dollars, so it'll be a little bit less expensive. They do ship pretty much everywhere. They will give you the amount for shipping before you can you know, finalize your order. They do accept PayPal, but they have Christmas designs. They have sentiments. They have floral designs. They have butterflies. They have birthday. They have ocean. They have trucks and cars and tools. They have background designs. I mean, they have a ton of different foil art. So foil art are these high quality toner printed designs. And all you have to do, it comes with instructions, is take out your foil art piece, decide what size you want it, cut it down, put your foil on top of it, and it's always pretty side up. So pretty side is always up. This is the side we want touching the, the toner. We're going to cut that to match, and then we're going to run it through our mink machine or our laminator. I'll talk about the differences in a moment as well. And then when we reveal, this is all going to be foiled. And Again, I'm not really going to go through demonstrating because I have like 800 videos on how to foil. So this is just an educational course on the differences. Um, and if you want to actually see the foiling, you're going to have to go back and watch some of my other videos because there's there's literally like 800 videos on foiling, you guys. Okay, so Crafty Krita is one of the companies based out of Australia. They do ship nationwide. I think in terms of foil art, this is the number one company that has designs, okay? Now, if you're here because you watch some of my older videos and you've heard me talk about creative vision stamps, 
Creative Vision Stamps has retired. They retired in May. They no longer are in business. You will not be able to find Creative Vision Stamps foilables, and you will not be able to find Creative Vision Stamps foil anymore, okay? So please make sure that um, if you're watching my videos, this company is Crafty Krita. They are based out of Australia. They're current. Oh, I also did want to show their mug sidebar here. Look at this. Look at this. Nancy's a crafty critter, are you? And then it has on the back here all of the things that they offer. They have these wonderful storage boxes. I have one, two, three of them right now. Um, foil, foil art, chipboard, shakers, SVGs, card top. So they sell all kinds of things. Foil and foil art are their two newest additions. And again, you can use Nancy Stamps 05 or FSC 05 if that one's easier for you to remember. And you get 5% discount. As far as foil goes, they also have a wide selection of foils. And they do state on here that these are toner foils. So it says on here, toner foil, toner foil. Now, they come in these bags. You want to keep them stored in the bag. So when you are storing your foil, dust is the enemy. Um, so for those of you that have pets, you want to kind of have your area dust free of pet hair and things like that. But you can see they have wonderful, beautiful foils. Um, a huge selection. They come in these nice rolls. This is for toner foiling. If you are looking for a company in Australia or you're looking for foil art, Crafty Krita is one that I would highly, highly, highly recommend for you to check out, okay? That's if you don't want to print your own. Another company that you can look for that prints is um, ThermoWeb. Now, ThermoWeb, you've heard of, and we're going to talk a lot about ThermoWeb. ThermoWeb is the parent company to DecoFoil, Okay. So, what does ThermoWeb make? ThermoWeb makes all of these things from, and you've seen other brands, other companies put their name on ThermoWeb. But let me talk about what you're getting with ThermoWeb. ThermoWeb has been a very a long time company. They've been around a very, very long time. I would say they are probably one of the original foiling originators. Um, but it really took off when Heidi Swap came in and brought her mink machine. But so with ThermoWeb, you can get all of these wonderful products, um, DecoFoil products. So they do sell toner foils, and it says on here, iCraft DecoFoil, and it says transfer sheets, okay? Transfer sheets. Now they come in rolls, they come in sheets. Okay, so you can see Gina K is just one of the companies that puts her name, her branding on here. But these are all ThermoWeb DecoFoils. So they come in sheets, they come in rolls. It's just a matter of personal preference. And then they have these pre-printed designs. So if you want pre-printed designs, again, Gina K has some. I know there's a few companies that do. Unity Stamps has quite a few. So if you don't want to buy a laser printer and you want to make your or buy pre-printed ones um you want to use these companies so thermoweb decofoil same company crafty Krita. those are the companies that i would recommend uh mink heidi swap mink heidi swap sells her own brand but what you want to see is toner printed toner printed card fronts toner printed car fronts now i'm going to tell you guys a little secret here you may not know if you have black and white paper in your stash, for example, the Alta New paper pad. Let me grab that. I forgot about that one. Or not. Oh, here it is. I got it. Okay. This is the Alta New paper pad. This is a black and white paper pack. And I'll link... I will link my ThermoWeb and my Altenew links for you guys. But this paper is toner printed. Now, how do I know that? Well, number one, I tested it and ran it through my machine. But two, you can almost feel that it's raised a little bit. Doesn't always happen. But normally when you see super black printing like this, guess what, you guys? You can foil this. And this is double-sided. So you can foil the front or you can foil the back. So you can buy this paper pack 
Here we go. Alta New Essential Black and White Paper Pack. These are toner printed. So if you have black and white paper in your stash, you can possibly foil it if it is toner printed, not laser printed. And most high-end industrial printers, so if you have a work printer, a work photocopier, um, some of you have invested, like I have invested in a laser printer for my, for my job, you can use those. Now, you can also use a color laser printer, but black and white is the best for printing toner images. Okay? All right, so these are all things that are at your fingertips already that you could probably have or can order and foil yourself without having to buy your laser printer and foil it yourself. Okay? Um, the last thing on here is what are called toner sheets. Now, you can make your own toner sheets or you can buy toner sheets. Again, Teco Foil sells them. And these are full coverage toner. So they took a piece of paper. In this case, it's adhesive back paper. And they covered it with that toner. So if you wanted to die cut this and foil it, you could do that. So you can do anything with die cutting um, and foil it with these full deco foil toner sheets. So this, this one is peel and stick toner sheets. They do sell non peel and stick toner sheets as well. And our admins are doing a great job. They just linked for you Catherine Pooler who carries all of these items. They're linking for you ThermoWeb. They're linking for you Altenew. So all of the places that you want to go shopping, write them down and then you guys will have an idea. All right. So what kind of things can you do with toner foil? So I'm going to go through that real quick. As you see, you can buy pre-printed toner sheets and do toner foiling. The other thing you can do with toner foiling is really simple stuff like a glue pen, um, double-sided tape if you wanted to do the edges. You know, like if you, you know how we do ink blending on the edges of our cardstock if we can't find the colors that we want. Well, you can use double-sided tape. You can use Zig Glue. Anything that's sticky, foil's going to stick to it. Okay. Cynthia, as of right now, I'm going to say the current Slimline Catherine Pooler ink is not foilable at this time. And I'll show you what I mean. I did test out this paper and this paper did not foil very well. So I'm going to say no on this one. I don't have any other Catherine Pooler ink, so I'm not sure. But this is this one does not. If your video is blurry, guys, please go into the settings of your YouTube channel. And it's a, it's the, the three little ellipsis buttons in the top corner. Go to quality and change your quality to 480 or higher because that's probably what's cutting out. Um, sometimes my video will cut in and out. Yes, Linda, thank you for reminding me of that. Tattered Lace Designs. Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that one. I, I had that over here, too. So, Tattered Lace Designs in the UK. Here we go. My friend Lee from the UK sent me this giant pile. Tattered Lace Designs, if you are in the UK, has beautiful foil designs, as you can see here, and they also have foil. Okay, so yes, for the UK folks, Tattered Lace Designs, this is foil, toner printed foiling images, and they also carry their own foil. Thank you for reminding me of that, Linda. I forgot. Okay, um, another way that you can use foil is everybody's going to ask about stamping. I'm not going to get into how you do this, but I'm going to show you the two most common ways of stamping, and I'm going to tell you what my two takes. By the way, everything here is my opinion. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Uh, the majority of these products I have purchased with my own money. If they were not purchased with my own money and sent to me, I would not be showing them to you if I did not try them, use them, and like them. Um, there are some brands that I do not like that I don't like the type of foiling, so you won't hear me talk about those because, honestly, 
I think it's a waste of money. So if you don't hear me talking about it, if you don't see it and you're kind of wondering why, it's just because it's not something that I would prefer to spend my money on for foiling. You, of course, can spend your money any way you want. <laughs> um, and I have a ton of videos on each of these methods. So I have toner foiling, stamping with foiling. We're going to talk about hot foiling, foiling through stencils, foiling without stencil, everything you want. I can do that, okay? All right, so let's talk about stamping with foiling. So previously, the only way that you really could stamp and foil was to stamp your image, scan it into your computer, and print it out, um, print it out on your laser printer or your Xerox copier and do it the way I just told you to do it. That is probably the best way to get your crisp, clear, stamped images. The problem with that is it takes a while. You gotta stamp your image out, you gotta go to your computer, you gotta scan it into the computer, you gotta print it out with your laser printer. Nobody wants to really go through that. Everybody wants instant gratification now, right? So there are two products that you can basically use to do stamp, and I will show you how to do stamp. I'm gonna tell you how, I'm not gonna show you how, stamp foiling. There is already a video on this one. So the first one is by using embossing powders, okay? now. In my world, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a no, 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 okay? But everybody asks because if you're new to foiling, you want to know, you want to experiment, you want to try it out. So there are quite a few companies. I have two in my hand. I know of at least five that sell a bonding powder or a foiling embossing powder. Nancy has purchased them all and tried them all, okay? This is what happens when you use those products, all right? So basically what you have to do is stamp out your image, put your bonding powder or your um, uh, sticky embossing powder or your foiling powder down, and then you have to very quickly get the foil on there before it cools and then release the foil, and you can see you get very spotty, distressed images. Now, the finer your powder is, Super, super fine embossing powder will give you this result here. So you don't really need to buy any kind of special embossing powder. If you wanna do this, you can buy super fine embossing powder, clear super fine embossing powder, and this is the result you're gonna get. And the reason is because those granules are so much smaller, they heat up faster, they melt smoother, and you're gonna get a smoother ad adhering to your foil, okay? now. If you do this and then you say, well, let me run it through my mink or my laminator machine and see what happens, this is what happens. <laughs> Basically, the powder gets reheated, it gets smushed, and it smears out. So you can see this started as a feather, <laughs> and the embossing powder just oozes out, and that's what you get. So I do not recommend embossing powder stamping. You don't want embossing powder anywhere near your desk. Embossing powder leaves black spots all over the place, so you really don't want to embossing powder. I don't care who the company is, who the manufacturer is. I have bought them all. I have tried them all. If you have a question about it, you can certainly email me at foilingsnobsclub at gmail. Yes, I have even tried the one that is called foiling embossing powder and it is no different than what you see here. So don't buy it, it's really just not worth it. Just buy the super fine, clear embossing powder if you wanna try this out, and you heat it, stick the foil down. Heat it some more, stick the foil down. Heat it some more, stick the foil down. It's a very long, time-consuming process, and you're not going to get super smooth results. You're gonna get this kind of distressed look, all right? Any questions about that? I see my admins are on full alert with answering questions. Keep them coming. Okay. So the second way is this new product that came out last year. I think it was last year, right? This time last year. This is the Heidi Swap Toner Stamping Kit. Oh, everybody heard angels when this came out. Um, I think Nancy did five videos on this. I did five videos on this. And I tried every which way to get this product to work. And you know what, guys? It didn't work. The stamp pad, the ink gets too sticky, the stamp pad fell apart, 
it dries out, you, you know, and this is a $20 kit. It's not inexpensive or 25, I think at the time. Um, and it just didn't work. So after months and months of trying it, I finally gave up and said, this doesn't work. I'm done. I'm not going to do it again. Well, Heidi must have been getting kind of the same results from everybody that was trying this product because she reached out to the king of distress himself, Tim Holtz. And if you haven't checked, check Instagram. Tim Holtz and Heidi Swap did a duo live on their Instagram, and he really found the best way to make this work. And the best way to make this work is you don't even need this whole kit. Don't bother buying that whole thing. The ink pad is crap. All you need to buy, and you can buy this separately, is the toner ink. And it's about $10 for this toner ink. And these are all, my results are the same as Tim results because I watched Tim's video and there's a couple things you need to know. And I have a video showing this. You need the toner ink. You want some kind of a dropper um, lid on it. If I can get mine out. There we go. And that's because this is some really super sticky, basically it's like tar. This is super sticky ink. Again, because it's toner. What is it designed to do? It is designed to stick, reheat, melt, and stick to foil. So this is really thick ink, okay? And you want the dropper top because what you're going to do is you're going to drop it on a non-stick surface. You're going to take your brayer, and then you're going to brayer onto your stamp and then stamp that down. That is the best method to use this product. Do not buy this set. This stamp pad is useless. It is not worth anything. Just buy, if you want to do this, the toner ink, the brayer, you know, a little dropper, okay? This dries very quickly, so you want to do it in very small, small areas and increments of stamping. So I stamped up this stamp, and you want to let it completely dry, which doesn't take very long. And then I ran this through with the same bronze foil here and you can see that it looks like it foiled pretty well. It does a pretty good job, but again, you're not going to get 100% foiling. Now, this image is very organic. I picked this image on purpose. This is the Feather Pleasure stamp set from Local King Rubber Stamps, but the image is not crisp and clear. It's a feather, so we have lines, we have dots, we have um, feathering, you know, so it's not a crisp, clean image. So this works best because if you try to get a crisp, clean image using this product, you're just going to get disappointed. The other thing is paper, paper, paper matters. Paper, paper, paper matters. And everything I'm going to show you today, paper matters. The number one paper I'm going to tell you to invest in is Hamilco semi-gloss paper, okay? So I know the foil is glaring off of there, but this is not regular paper. This paper is coated. Because this ink is super sticky, when you go to stamp with it, have you ever stamped with a brand new photopolymer stamp and the whole thing comes up? Okay, that's what happens with this ink. It's literally like a glue. So it rips traditional paper. So you want to very quickly pick up your link, ink, ink your stamp, stamp and lift. You do not want your stamp pad to stick with that sticky toner ink on your paper. It will rip your paper. But use Hamilco semi-gloss paper. It's in my Amazon shop. There's two in there. One says semi-gloss, one says glossy. They're identical. I don't know why they call one semi-gloss and one glossy. There's visibly no difference between the two. But then you let this dry and you can run this through your mink or your laminator. That is the best way possible to get this to work if you want to do stamping and foiling. Okay. It is not... 100%, but if you like the distressed kind of look and you want to add that foiling, I certainly do not recommend it for sentiments at all. But on an organic image like this, you can see it does work. But paper, paper, paper matters. All right. How are we doing, you guys? Hi, Ryan. Um, am I doing a good job at answering basic questions here? And we are still talking about toner, mink foil. We're not going into hot foil just yet. I will get there. All right. There is this wonderful little pen here. This is called a mink pen. I know this one says Anna Griffin, but I have another one here. I 
think I have an unopened one somewhere. Maybe not. There we go. Mink toner pen. Okay. So this pen is basically filled with all of that goodness. And you just write out whatever you want it to say. You want to prime it a little bit. Again, it gets nice and sticky, so it's going to dry out and not want to work. That one's a little better. Obviously, another product I don't use a lot of. So what this is going to do then is it's going to dry, and then I can run this through my mink or my laminator. And, you know, if you have great lettering, um, this is an okay product. Here's the problem with this. It's very uneven with how it lays down the ink, okay? So even if you have wonderful lettering, whatever, you can see how there's some areas that are heavier, some areas are lighter. So then what you would need to do is go through and trace those areas. And so because this is inconsistent with how much ink comes out of it, you're going to have inconsistent results when you foil it. So this is a product I do not use very often. I only use it when I make a boo-boo and I need to touch up a spot and I can go like that and then I can touch up a little spot that I missed foiling on. But as far as hand lettering and things like that, this is not the product to recommend for that. Okay. <laughs> what do I use to clean my stamps after using the mink toner you need a heavy duty cleanser I always recommend hero arts um, but because that is a super sticky ink honestly the best thing to do is to take your stamps up and wash them in warm soap and water because that is literally like tar on your stamps so warm soap and water works best on those things Um, Elizabeth, even if you forget to foil, um, it stays good. It doesn't ever go bad. So if you leave it out to dry and then you come back to it two weeks from now, that toner is now on there. So it will foil. Okay. All right. You guys are doing great with questions. So yes, yes, yes. Okay. So um, I want to talk to you about the different um, looks of foil because everybody asks me that. So there are a couple of companies that I'm going to endorse and recommend here for foiling. If you can find Creative Vision Stamps Foil, maybe you win a prize package, maybe you find a yard sale or eBay and somebody's selling foil. If it is Creative Vision Stamps, yes, all, everybody needs to take notes. <laughs> Creative Vision Stamps Foil is a foiling company is very near and dear to my heart because this is how I learned how to foil and the secrets to foiling. And now I am sharing them all with you guys. So this foil is different from other foils on the market because this foil is what is called a textile foil. And now you all are saying, oh, now this is getting complicated. What's textile foil? Okay, Textile foil is a foil specifically designed for textiles. Everybody has seen a shirt or a hat that has had some kind of a logo on it and it's been foiled. I don't have my foil shirt in front of me. So what this textile foil is designed to do with the proper adhesive application, you can foil shirts. Like I cut out my logo, it was the FSC logo, logo this one right here, and I put it on a t-shirt and then I use some heat and bond and was able to put that logo on my shirt. That's what this is. So this foil comes in very long rolls. It's normally 25 feet of foil. So this roll is six inches in length and 25 feet in foil. That's going to get you really, really a lot of cards to foil. Okay. And it will hold up. It's not going to be static cling. You can just hear that's a little thicker in texture. It's easier to cut. And in terms of storing it, you just want to roll it up and put it back in its little baggie. Put it back in its little bed there. Um, this is the type of foil I prefer because static cling makes everything yucky because, again, pet hair, hair, dust, embossing powders, glitter, everything that's on your desk sticks to it. Um, in fact, I will show you. I was sent some foils, and these foils are super staticky. I couldn't even...
Let me open it here. But as I was opening, like it started to like stick to my sleeve. See how it's sticking to itself there? So that doesn't mean the foils don't perform well. It's just more of an aggravation or an annoyance when a foil is thin and it makes it harder to cut. It makes it a little more difficult to store it and keep it pretty. And the reason I bring this up is if you have a chance of getting textile foil, that is the best foil to get. And the companies that we recommend for that are Creative Vision Stamps Foil. And we do have a company that's been stocking foil for us. It's a small company, but they gave us an amazing price. And the name of that company is H&H &H Sign, which Chow just linked for us. She's on top of it. So H&H, &H, when they sell you this textile foil, they actually sell you the foil in 12-inch rolls. So you get a roll of foil 12, it's actually 12 and a half inches long. So it's the same quality as the old Creative Vision Stamps foil, but they don't cut it in half. So if you are a scrapbooker, if you want to do large pieces of foiling, you're going to get a big 12-inch roll of foil. So your next question is to me, Nance, I don't want a 12-inch roll of foil. What do I do? Well, then you find somebody who has a chop saw or you find a neighbor that's pretty handy or maybe you go to your local... Um, hardware store and you ask them to cut the foil in half at about six and a quarter is where I cut my foils. I do cut mine. Okay. Um, so the next question is, all right, what is the difference between textile foil and all of the other foils that are out on the company out on the road? Okay. So here's a perfect example. I have two examples. Here is a very large roll of Heidi Swap iridescent ultraviolet mink foil. Okay, so this is toner foil. It is a 12 inch roll of foil, which is what this was when I bought it from H&H. &H. However, this is only going to give you six feet of foil versus 25 feet of foil. Okay, so you tell me which one do you wanna buy? They're both gonna come in this 12, a little bit larger than 12 inch roll. So remember this roll was the same as this, but I cut mine in half. Do you want six feet or do you want 25 feet? And it's about the same price. Okay. Here's the second thing you're going to notice. Nance, it's the same color foil. It is the same color foil. <laughs> so the better value is with the H&H &H foil, but there is a huge difference in something else. The quality of the foil. This is paper craft foil. Paper craft foil is slightly thinner, and I know you guys can't feel this, but you may be able to hear or see the way it lays. It's much thinner, so it's going to give you a little bit of static cling. You gotta be careful with that. And listen to, it. there's just a little bit more solid to this, and here's a big indication of that. I know you guys can't feel it, but I think I can show you the difference here. And that's because of the backing sheet that they put on the foil. The textile foil, because it's designed for textiles, has a thicker backing on the foil. Again, it really doesn't affect too much on how the foil performs. If you're going to do paper crafting, you're, you're really not going to notice a big difference. But you do not want to use this foil on your shirts. You want to use the textile foil on your shirts. So let me see if I can demonstrate this for you. So this is, I don't know if the light's going to show through. The, it's probably too reflective to show through. This foil is so much thinner that I can see all the way through it. You guys aren't going to be able to see through the camera. But I can literally see through this like a pair of sunglasses, like it's all coated. But I can see through this foil that I wanted to try to demonstrate that with paper through the foil because this is much thinner foil. I can feel the difference, I can see the difference, I can hear the difference. The textile foil, because it has a thicker carrier sheet, I cannot see through this. It is not translucent, it does not show through. It's hard for me to explain on the camera, but believe me, this is way thicker. It's gonna hold up longer, it's a better value at 25 feet per roll than the mink or the, the deco foil. Now. I understand not everybody's in the U.S. You're not going to be able to get this foil. So we do, obviously, 
I have a ton of mink foil. I literally have a ton of mink foil. So I don't want you to feel discouraged and say, well, if I don't have textile foil, I can't buy the foils. The other thing I wanted to show you is you can get very similar foils. So this is the holographic ultraviolet um, pink. Here is the tie-dye bronze. This one is from H&H. Right, so Elizabeth makes a good point. Because it's so light, it rolls on itself and it has static cling. And this is what I don't like. So here, this is the deco foil tie-dye bronze. There's five sheets in here. You get six inches by 12 inches. They've cut these sheets down into the size they think would be appropriate. Well, what happens is multiple sheets get stuck together. There's two in here, I promise. It's just really hard to pull them apart and I end up cutting into two sheets often here we go I promise you there are two here see I've been doing this so long I know better okay so there's two that are stuck together because of static cling so if I had thought it was one I would have cut it and here's the problem I have with these sheets let's say I want to cut out a toner foil background this is an A2 size toner foil background Okay, so if I have one sheet of these, I can cut one, I can cut two. What am I supposed to do with this extra three inches of foil that's left over? I can't do anything with that. That is wasted foil to me, and that is what really kind of irks me when it comes to foiling. This stuff is not cheap. You're investing in it. And now I have five sheets that they think is a good size for a card maker to use. And each one of these sheets is going to have a little bit of a three inch overhang. Okay. Versus buying a solid roll. If you can get a bigger roll, that's 25 feet of foil. I'm not going to have three inches of wasted foil on the end because it's a continuous roll of foil that it's just better. It's a better value. It's a better budget. And you can see it's exactly the same foil. There's no difference in the way that the appearance is, but there is a difference in value. There is a difference in the way that it feels. There is a difference in the way that it cuts. There is a difference in, in the way that it lays down. So please keep that in mind. I heard someone else demonstrate foil and say, well, let's face it, they all come from the same factory. That is not true. I'm going to argue that. I've done a ton of foiling videos and yeah, I buy these foils. I use these foils. I'm not saying don't go and buy and use them. I'm saying if you have an option to get a better value, try to do some homework and research a better value. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm off my soapbox there. It just really irked me to hear somebody say, oh, it's all the same company. It's not the same company. And I'm not going to lie to you guys and say, oh, buy this company over this company because I have an affiliate link and tied to this company and it's just as good as this. That is not true at all. Not true at all. So I want to make sure you guys are understanding and educated on the difference of the foils. Okay. Um, all right, so do you guys understand the basics of, and, and again, this foil comes in sheets as well. So it comes in little rolls, it comes in big rolls, it comes in sheets. Um, there's another company, Fab Foil. These come in tiny little sheets. All right, let's see here. Let me look at questions. Okay, so Mashiko asked an awesome question. She wants to know, is it possible to lay scraps next to each other and foil them without getting a joint line? The honest answer is no, Mashiko. Um, anytime that foil is not one solid piece of foil and you start lining it up, you will see that line. No matter how microscopic you think it's going to be, you will see it. So my advice when foiling is always to cut your foil to match the size of your image, um, the lining up never ever works out, no matter how much you try to get them right next to each other, because here's what happens. As the foil goes through the heating process and it starts to stick, I'm gonna give you a kind of a, a visual here. I'll give you a visual. And this is the problem with a lot of issues people have. 
um, if your foil kind of wrinkles, if your foil doesn't foil all over and you get bubbles and you don't know why. So let me give you the example here. So imagine this is going through your mink machine, right? So it's going through the heat rollers, okay? What's happening to this foil as it goes through the roll rollers, right? It's getting hot. And as it's getting hot, think of a piece of tape. You're sticking that, sticking that, sticking that, sticking that. So eventually what happens is the foil kind of moves a little. It shrinks. Because as I'm sticking this and sticking it and sticking it, it's sticking and it's not moving anymore. So that starts to pull away from the edge. So you want your foil to be slightly bigger than your image. Okay. Now if I have another piece of foil over here, what happens? That foil hasn't stuck down yet, so it hasn't moved. And in the meantime, there's going to be a gap from where the first foil has been glued down and the second foil has not been activated yet. It's not heat activated. So there's always going to be that slight little line between the two. So the best way to, to answer that is no, try to use one piece of foil. Now, if you're foiling multiple images, like maybe you have, uh, for example, these Gina K butterflies, and maybe you want to do this wing orange and this wing purple, they're two separate images. Of course, you could do, you just piece together two different pieces of foil there, run them through at the same time. I don't recommend running them through at different times. Try to run them both through at the same time. Thank you, Sherry, for the super chat. I appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so Mashiko, I hope that answered your question. Whenever you run any foiling through more than once, you're going to mar your foil. It, it gives a pretty cool effect, but what ends up happening is the foil ends up reheating and whatever is on your rollers, that impression from the rollers, because they're smooth rubber rollers, um, actually presses into your foil again. So always try to run your foiling projects through once and done if you can. If you ever do double foiling, which is not a subject for today, but double foiling, if you run that through twice, you'll notice the first layer that you foiled loses some of its gloss and its shininess um, because of that, because it gets run through the machine again. Okay, does everybody understand toner printed designs, toner printed foiling, stamping and foiling, do not emboss in powder and foil, deco foil toner sheets, before I move on here, okay? I also want to tell you guys there are different translucencies to foil. And this is a perfect example is our lovely foiling fairy sent me this lovely yellow foil. This is actually my favorite color, this yellow here. It's a golden yellow. Why? Because it's the color of the Steelers. So I want you guys to understand you will very rarely see me use translucent foil because what is the point of foil? The point of foil is to foil something and make it shiny and pretty and see the foil, right? So if I foil this toner sheet, do you know what you're going to see? You're going to see black circles, okay? so. Check out the translucency of your foil. Uh, why would you use this type of foil? I'm gonna show you a different way that you would use this type of foil. I don't recommend translucent foil. Um, it's not really foil, it's more like a vinyl overlay because you're still going to see the black. Everywhere there's a black circle is where this neon yellow is gonna stick to, but it's not going to be neon yellow. It's gonna be exactly the way you see it here because it's translucent. It does not have a base layer of foil. It's just translucent vinyl sheets, okay? But there is, there is a use for these, and the use for these is deco foil paste or any kind of paste. Now, if you are brand new to foiling and you are very confused right now as to what I'm talking about, <laughs> it's understandable. There's a lot to learn. Just remember, I've been doing this for a very long time, okay? Maybe you haven't purchased any machines yet. You don't, you just, somebody gave you some foil for Christmas or you found some at a yard sale. You don't know what you, what you have and what to do with it. There's really only one product you need to buy and that is Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo, okay? Buy the Duo, don't bother buying the regular one, 
okay? Transfer Gel Duo will work with heat or non-heat. So you can use this in your mink or laminator. You can also use it um, with hot foil, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what you can use this for is any kind of foils that you have, whether they're translucent or shiny or not, when this goes down, it dries as a clear paste. Use this through your stencils. So some examples that I have are right here. So this was one run through with a star stencil. This one was a butterfly stencil. And all you do is you take this paste and you take your little, your spatulas, whatever you got here. Okay, and it's, it looks like glue and it dries like glue. It's completely clear, it smells like glue, okay? It is goes on white, milky white. It will dry completely clear. Once it is completely clear, give it 24 hours, by the way, less than 24 hours and you're gonna have a blobby mess, okay? Give it 24 hours and when it is completely dry, you're going to take your piece of foil, again, cut it slightly larger than your image, and you can run this through your die cutting machine. So if you have a Gemini Junior, if you have a Spellbinders machine, if you have a, a Big Kick machine, Big Shot machine, you don't need any heat at all. All you need is this paste, a stencil, and then some foil, and any foil will work without heat. You can use hot foil. Do not use heat, okay? Do not use heat. Now, I prefer using heat because heat smooths this out and gives it a much glossier finish. You can see here my finish has kind of got some lines and things on it. That's because this picked up all of the lines in my cutting plate. So when I run it through my Gemini, you see how my cutting plate has all of these little lines through it? So that foil is very impressionable with that gel. It's gonna stick to it, but then all of those lines are going to transfer to that. How you can prevent that is put a piece of paper over it. But if you use the heat method, it will smooth it out and you'll just get a little bit uh, better appearance on that. But you don't really need to buy anything fancy. You probably already have stencils. You probably already have a die cutting machine. You, Get yourself some foils, it doesn't matter what kind, and use Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. Duo is the only one that will work without heat, okay? A thinner coat is better, yes, okay? And that's where these translucent foils come in because if you're doing this on white cardstock, you stencil through white cardstock, this will show up as yellow. This one will show up as neon yellow. You know, there's some other companies out there that sell different colors of this translucent foil. You can use any type of foil, hot foil, toner foil, anything with this gel. Just don't add heat if you're not sure which foil you have. Okay. If you if it smushes because you're you're you have too thick of a coat and you're not letting it dry completely, you have. It smushes out if you have it too thick and you don't let it dry completely. I always let mine sit for at least 24 hours. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you're just starting with foiling, that is the easiest, least expensive way to do foiling on there. Okay. And on the translucent foil, I always recommend using these on white cardstock if you're going to do that. But it doesn't matter what kind of card. When you're using the deco foil um, gel, I have some mirror card samples here. I did have samples here. Oh my gosh, where'd my samples go? Oh, here we go. So I like the gel because it uses the stencils I already have. And you can see here I am on foil card. This is um, the Jean, or Catherine Pooler stencil with the Catherine Pooler. Uh, new, she's now carrying deco foil at Catherine Pooler. And I did it on some mirror card. Like it's, it's textured mirror card. So... You know, this probably would not print very well if I tried to print it, but that's Catherine Pooler stencil. Um, I think that's the only other one I have. So when you run it through a stencil, it just 
just makes it easy for everybody. Just any stencils you have. You run the paste through, thin coat, let it dry 24 hours, run it through your die cutting machine, machine or run it through your laminator. It doesn't matter. It'll, it'll come out great. Okay. Okay, so if you have the transfer gel of the same brand, so if you have Decofoil regular transfer gel, if you have Ranger Texture Paste Transparent Gloss, if you have Heidi Swap Clear Transfer Paste, Texture Paste, all of these you're going to do the same way, but you need heat. So these you would have to run through your mink machine, your laminating machine, and give them heat. So you cannot run these through just, not the duo, minus the duo. You, can run, you can't run these through just in your die cutting machine. So if you have a laminator or a mink, you can do the same method, but you just need to give it heat. Now, um, we're going to talk about the difference between a mink and a laminator in just a moment. If you're going to be using a laminator, you need, need, need to let your laminator heat up for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay? A minimum of 30 minutes. Hi, Leanne. So, there is a huge difference in mink and laminator. And anybody on here that wants to argue with me because they might be someone who had a bad experience with a mink, I know there were a couple of bad minks out there. Majority of people were able to exchange them and get a legitimate real mink. I have had my original mink for, I don't know, six or seven years now. Um, and it was at that time called the um, Anna Griffin mink. Well, now the mink is is through Heidi Swap. Um so what is a mink and what is a laminator and what's the difference? Okay, huge differences between the two, but again, I'll try to give you guys a basic rundown here. And I do have videos on using a $20 laminator. I'm going to ask you guys Please, 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 you guys, please don't go buy a $60 laminator, <laughs> okay? I know there are some very big name stamp companies, YouTubers that use a $60, $70, $80, $90 laminator. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't care how much you love their products. Don't do it, okay? you are going to be serious about your foiling and you want the best foiling results, you need to try a mink machine, okay? And I will, I, will, I will bet you nine out of 10 people who went from a laminator to a mink wish they had done it sooner. And that one person who maybe got a bad mink or they don't do enough foiling don't understand the difference between the two, okay? So here is what the mink looks like now. There are actually three that you can buy, four that you can find. And let me explain what I mean. These are your traditional minks. So it's white with polka dots. This is a six inch opening. Well, maybe a little larger than six inches. Six and a half, okay? So you have a little bit of space. And inside this machine, there is a roller in the top and the roller in the bottom. And what happens is both of those rollers heat up. Not only do they heat up, but they are squeezing. So as the rollers are rolling on the top and the bottom, they are squeezing your project. So they are giving your project heat and they are giving it pressure. A laminator will not do that. These work as laminators and as foiling machines, by the way. So this is an all-in-one. You have five settings on the machine, zero through five. There's a power button on the back here you turn on first. And then you press this to the setting you want and it will light up. Zero is no heat. Five is super hot heat, which is going to be on your thicker projects. The majority of the time I am working on three or four. Okay, now... There is an older mink called the Anna Griffin mink, which is the same size as this, but it is gold on the outside. If you can find one of those, that's what I have. It works just as good. So if you guys are shopping on Facebook uh, Marketplace 
or eBay and somebody is selling a used mink, don't be afraid of it. If it's the gold Anna Griffin one, it's exactly the same as this. The only difference is the housing is gold. That's the one that I use all the time. You hear it clicking in the background sometimes. That's that one. This is the newer one, okay? I picked this one up when Amazon has them on sale for $40. Doesn't happen very often, so I have a spare mini mink, okay? All right, now here is what we call Big Mama Mink, okay? Big Mama Mink is the full size, and she's really Big Mama, okay? So, I, you guys can't, let me, let me, can I bring this up? I can't even show you how big Big Mama is. Big Mama is big, okay? So, Big Mama, if you need to laminate, like Tracy had to buy Big Mama because she does a lot of laminating stuff for work. She does a lot of projects for work. So, Big Mama Mink has a full opening. If you are into scrapbooking, she is, I believe this is a 13-inch opening for Big Mama Mink. And Big Mama Mink is basically the same thing, but she's larger. So you have the power button on the back. You have zero through five on your settings here. This is great if you want to do full size 12 by 12 sheets, eight and a half by 11 sheets. You want to foil multiple projects at one time. That's where Big Mama Mink comes in. Now, normally with Big Mama Mink, I got to run her on a little bit higher heat setting. And I think just because of the surface area, the dissipation of heat, I usually have to run her on five or Baby Mink I run on, on three. Okay. But Big Mama Mink gets hot. Now, do not do these with children or pets around. These get super hot on the top. They get super hot on the bottom. Sometimes they turn red and they smoke and smell a little bit. That is normal. If it catches on fire, that's not normal, okay? But, um, you know, you're, 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 you're running plastic and paper through hot rollers. It's going to smell a little bit sometimes. After the first couple of uses, it won't smell anymore and it won't smoke anymore, Okay. Um, most people, Jerry, do not have room for Big Mama Mink. She is heavy, 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 and she's expensive. She's a hundred bucks. So, um, if you don't think you're going to be doing full size laminating or full size, uh, foiling projects, you don't really need Big Mama Mink. Most people can get by with the Little Mink. Okay. So this is what most of us card makers use, and it's plenty of room to put these card front sizes in and foil them. Now, what is the difference between this and a laminator? A laminator, um, a laminator basically just heats the product, okay? So what a laminator is designed to do is the plastic sheets that you use to laminate have glue inside or adhesive. So when you are using a laminator, and there's a hundred million laminators out there on the market, this is like a $20 laminator. Not all $20 laminators are the same. But what happens is these laminating pouches, so here's a couple here. These laminating pouches have adhesive in here. That is the um, frosty looking stuff you see inside here. You can feel it. When this heats up, this sticks together and that glue sticks to your paper and now it's clear, okay? So the only thing a laminator has to do is heat up. It does not have to apply any pressure because once the glue is hot, it sticks together. So that's why a laminator never works as good as a mink, all right? Now, I do believe the more expensive laminators, the $60, $70, $80 laminators out there, I'm not going to go out and bother to buy one because for the same amount of money, I have a mink machine. And I'm going to use my mink machine way more than I'm going to use a laminator. Um, is that this only has to provide heat. It doesn't have to provide pressure. And a lot of questions I get are, I'm foiling with a laminator, it's not working. I'm foiling with a laminator, I'm not getting full coverage. I'm foiling with a laminator, it's not getting hot enough. And my answer is always, always, always going to be, you need to get a mink. So if you're going to ask my opinion in the time that I have been doing foiling, my guys call me the foiling empress, a laminator will never, ever be as good as a mink, P 
period, end of story. I will challenge everybody on that. Okay? Now, you're starting out. You don't have anything but a laminator. Use what you have. I'm not saying you need to go out and spend $100 on a mink machine. No, 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 no. You can find this bad boy on sale anywhere from $40 to $50. Full price is right around $70, okay? So it all just depends on the time of season. Right now, everybody was making Christmas cards, so they kind of sold out of them. Wait, they're always on sale somewhere, and you can pick them up. You can get this machine in the U.S., and you can get it in Europe with European plugs on it. Now, I have foiled with a $20 laminator. We can watch that video another day. But that is the huge difference between a mink and a laminator. Um, okay. Uh, now, we're going to talk about hot foil brook because that is the huge, huge um, question that a lot of people ask is, what is hot foiling? So... Um, two other little things we're going to talk about foiling real quick. Um, two little just tidbits that I have is how do you cut your foil? You can cut your foil a number of different ways. I would recommend a good pair of scissors, and I forget which one of you guys sent me these, but one of you guys, lovelies, sent me a good pair of foiling scissors because they were tired of watching me butcher the, the foil. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you can use your, your trimmer. You know, you can, I know Stacy likes hers always nice and neat. So you can take your foil, put that through and do your trimmer. I don't recommend that spellbinders thing because you probably already have a trimmer. Don't go spend an extra money. You don't need to spend on something you already own. I'm not going to buy one of those. It's up to you guys. Like I said, you spend your money any way you want to spend it. But if you have a paper trimmer, it's the same thing. You don't need a fancy schmancy plastic thing to tell you how to cut your foil. Okay. Um, and the way that has been my favorite lately is a rotary cutter. Any rotary cutter. Yes, I know it's not good to cut on your glass mat. So you do want to have some kind of self-healing mat. But you just slice your foil and go about your day. Okay. So that's how you cut your foil. I don't, I do not have that spellbinders thing. I don't plan on buying the spellbinders thing. If somebody wants to send me the spellbinders thing, I'll do a video for you guys. But to me, that's a waste of 20 bucks. Okay. Um, I'm trying to read the comments here. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. Here is one of the other secrets to foiling and all of my fsc'ers are gonna know as soon as they see this what am i gonna say not that i need to touch up my foundation so if you've watched any of my foiling videos you should have in the back of your mind before you run your foil through your mink or laminator you guys all got it. Dusty, 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 dusty. All right, everybody's got it. So here's what happens. Remember how I talked about static cling, right? So whenever you are foiling, pick up one of these. They're, they're seven bucks on my Amazon shop and they're really pretty, okay? Pick up a couple. You can get um, other ones, but if you have a large soft makeup brush, this one I now used for... Um, glitter and embossing powders and things like that. This one's just prettier and it's just much softer. Um, dusty, 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 dusty. So what ends up happening is as you run your toner sheet or whatever you're going to foil, your, your um, toner sheet, your printed designs, your um, paste, whatever, as you run this through the machine, remember how I said the foil is constantly sticking as it's getting heated up. Well, you know what else is on there? All of the things that were on your desk. Pet hair, dust, 
your embossing powders, your glitters. Face it, we're crafters. That stuff never leaves the desk. It's always here. And that is where black spots show up. So when you are foiling a full, a full toner image and you get tiny little microscopic pinholes of black and you send me an email and say, what is this? Why is this stuck all over my sheet? I'm going to send back. Did you remember to dust? Did you dusty, dusty? I'm going to see if I have a sample here that shows you. I have some laminator samples here. All right. So this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's easier to see. Do you guys see on this flower here, see those little black spots there? Okay, That's what it looks like when you don't dust. Now, people aren't going to notice it. I'm going to notice it. I want my foiling to be 100% perfect. And yes, you can get 100% perfect results. Okay, so see those tiny little black spots? Now, that's not what happened on this sheet. What, what um, I want to show you here is look at the finish on this foiled sheet. Oh, pretty snowflakes, everybody says. Yes, you can download those from Kitchen Sink Stamps. But notice the finish here. Spots, like it's not completely smooth. It looks distressed. The little points are not foiled. They're black, black, black. This is what happens when you foil through a laminator. Look here. Can you guys see all those black marks? Do you see how not smooth the foil is? Is it covered? It's covered. If you're going to use a $20 laminator, this is fine. Most people aren't going to notice. Now look what happens when you step up to a mink. Can you see the difference in the foiling? Look at how much smoother that foil is. Look at how much better coverage there is in that foil. There is a huge difference between using a laminator and using a mink when you are foiling. The mink gets hotter, it gets hotter faster, and it's going to give you pressure and you're going to get a much smoother um, result and better adhesion of the foil to your toner sheets. Can you see the difference there? So when people say, oh, I can foil with a laminator, I'm not saying you can't foil with a laminator. Of course you can foil with a laminator. Everybody wouldn't do it if they couldn't foil with a laminator. But you get stepped up results when you go to a mink. Okay, they're both pretty. No one's going to say they're not pretty. But if you want foiling snobs quality, the mink is going to give it to you. I printed both of these from my home computer on my laser printer. One's done with a laminator, one's done with a mink. Same exact foil, okay? So I just wanna clarify that and to make sure you understand Dusty Dusty. Now, I can't tell you how many times a week somebody asks, should I use my anti-static dust tool? <laughs> and I'm laughing to myself because I can understand why that's a question. We are not dusting this so the foil doesn't stick. We are dusting this to get particles off of the foil, off of the toner sheets. What do you think happens when you use an anti-static tool on there? What is this? It's powder. So if I put this on my project, project do you know what's going to happen? Your foil is not going to stick. You're going to have awful foiling. You're going to have spots everywhere. So please, you guys, keep your embossing powders, your glitters, dust, pet. Keep a Swiffer on your desk. Do not use this anywhere. Do not use this anywhere. But I get asked this question a lot. I understand where the question comes from. Use a soft brush. Keep all the dust off. Don't put anything near here. And also dust off the back of your foil before you adhere your foil, before you run that through. Okay, dusty, dusty. Hello, Linda from Rhode Island. Yes, Happy New Year, everybody. 
Kay says, I upped my DPI from 1,200, but I don't know if it makes a difference or not. Should I keep it at 600? So, Kay, um, ideally, 1,200 is going to print better than 600, but it really does not make a huge difference. What's going to make a difference is your paper, your foil, and the image itself. If an image is too fine of a design, um, super fine lines, you don't have enough surface area for the toner to stick to, then you're not going to get foil, good foil adhere, adhere, adhesion. The other thing is, you know, again, as this foil is going through and sticking and moving, if you have something that has a lot of lines or a lot of dots and the foil sticks and it can't move any further, what I mean by that is it creates air pockets as it's sticking, you might have issues there. If you have an issue with something that's not foiling correctly, I recommend turning it 90 degrees and trying to foil it in that direction. Now, on this one, it doesn't matter because this is a pattern. But if you have something and you're, you're getting a lot of wrinkling in your foil, or you're getting a lot of air bubbles in your foil, I recommend foiling it one way and then turning it 90 degrees and trying to feed it through the system that way and see if that helps you out. Okay. All right. How are we doing with... Um, that we're, wow, we're an hour and a half just in the toner foiling. How are we doing with questions? Is everybody able to keep up? There is no such thing as a dumb question, by the way, because if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it, and I would rather you ask me and I can answer it because I'm sure there are a couple of things I'm missing here. And although I am not demonstrating everything, there are a ton of videos where I do demonstrate everything. You just have to go through my playlist. I have a toner playlist. I have a hot foil playlist. I have foiling with... Um, the toner ink. I have foiling through stencils. I have foiling, you name it, I got it. Okay. I will be doing a video on this little gem right here. What? I have not played with this yet. We want to say thank you to Lee, our UK ambassador. Lee sent me this foil transfer kit for the scan and cut. Um, so, have not done a video with this. I will play with this system, but this basically is a two-way glue system. So all you do is you have this little adapter that goes in your scan and cut. You have a glue pen you stick in there. You trace out your design and then you stick your foil on. So this seems like a no-brainer. Should be pretty easy to figure out. So keep an eye out. That'll be a video coming for next year. Yes, you can use the mink with the Deco Duo Gel. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. So the other thing on... Yes, you always have to let the glue go. Uh, anytime you're using any paste or glue, you have to let it dry 100% completely before you stick any foil to it. Otherwise, you're going to get oozing, and nobody wants oozing on their foil. That's just gross. Um, so based on your printer, I have the brother printer. Stacy has the Canon printer. We have done a couple of videos again in the foiling snobs club. The settings that I like to use on my brother printer is, um, thick cardstock and, um, mine's at least 600 DPI and make sure that you have toner fixation on, which means for me, the paper feeds through the front of my printer and comes out of the back of the printer. It doesn't go in the front, curl under and come out of the front. I want that toner to be uh, not touched as it goes through the printer. I want it to come out the back. And toner fixation is going to dry it faster so that the toner particles don't smear and um, before they dry, spread out everywhere. All right, I'm going to move this stuff off the desk while I bring in the hot foiling stuff. Make sure you guys are writing down your questions, notes. I certainly want to answer as much as I can answer because I know a lot of you got new foiling machines from Santa Claus. And you probably have 8 million questions on what is this? Can I use this? Can I use that? Um, huge difference I wanted to just say, and I, I miss mentioning this. Um, there's two things actually, is 
Number one, the difference between toner and mink foiling and hot foiling is hot foiling has an adhesive built into the foil. We're going to talk about that in just a second, okay? Second thing is when you are, there you go, Stacy, thank you. When you are running through a laminator or through a mink, because the mink is super hot, they sell large and small. I want to show you what the packaging looks like. Okay. They sell what are called carrier sheets. All right. So these carrier sheets, um, basically they are heat resistant plastic. Okay. This is not a laminator sheet. Please do not, please do not, please do not use laminator sheets. It's something completely different. Remember I told you before, laminator sheets have adhesive built into it. So if you roll your project through the laminator sheet, it's going to get laminated. We don't want to use laminator sheets. Um, what you want to do is this is a heat resistant plastic that's going to protect your project and protect your foil as it's running through the mink machine. Do not use these in a laminator. They are not designed for a laminator. As you can see, I have quite a few of them. And what ends up happening eventually is they get boogered up. So here is one that has, you see here it has foil stuck on it. Here it has toner stuck on it. This one's got foil, glue, all kinds of things stuck on it, okay? So what you do to clean these is you take a little bit of acetone on a cotton ball and wipe them and it will come off. Sometimes alcohol works, but acetone seems to work the best. Not fingernail polish remover, not fingernail polish remover with lotion, not fingernail polish remover with vitamin E, not nourishing fingernail polish remover, acetone. The difference is all of those other products have an oil in them and that oil will transfer to your sheets. You want acetone, plain acetone, okay, which is dirt cheap, okay. Uh, the Mini Mink may have been sold out on the Amazon site. You can check scrapbook.com, okay. So um, that's a great question, Brenda. There are not, but what you can do um, is you can purchase the large 12 by 12 sheets and you can cut them down to, to long and thin. They're, they're very easy to cut these down to what size you want. They sell big ones. They sell like an 8 by 14. So you can cut that down to be um, thinner but longer for your slim lines. Yes. No, acetone and nail polish remover are different. Nail polish remover has conditioners in it. Hello, Sandra Minkaholic. Welcome to the Foiling Snobs Club. Okay, now, every once in a while, our little buddy, the mink, gets in a bad mood. And sometimes when we go to feed this through the machine, maybe we have it off on a little angle. This one has a little crunch in the corner. And she does occasionally eat our projects. It does happen. It is part of the business. Um... Star, you can also check um, Blick.com, Scrapbook.com, Amazon, Walmart, I think, has some. I sent one to somebody from Walmart. You can check that out. Just check around. Um, so when that happens and this starts to chew up, because that's what it sounds like, and you freak out and you start cursing, here's how you remove it. Back on the back of the machine here, this is a release nozzle. And what this release nozzle does is it opens your rollers, okay? So the rollers are still rolling, but it opens them. Remember I told you they have pressure? So it's going to open the rollers as it opens the roller, and this is going to come out, and it's going to be all jacked up and crunched and wrinkled. Yank it out of there. Throw it away, okay? Do not try to iron it. Do not try to run it through your big kick machine or your um, big shot or your Gemini Junior. Do not try to save it. Throw it away. 
<laughs> okay. Once these guys get used so many times and they go through that wrinkling period where they, see this is still usable. Even though this has toner on it, I can clean this up but I don't have a wrinkled one in front of me, okay? The, you guys, use my scrapbook.com link. You can get a pack of two of these small ones for like four or five dollars. They're super inexpensive. Buy a whole bunch of them, okay? When they get chewed up and eaten by your mink machine, do not try to save it. Listen, I'm very frugal. I'm the frugalist of all frugals, okay? throw it away. You will destroy your machine. You will destroy your projects. And most of all, you destroy your sanity. If you try to save and use that wrinkled up sheet, just get rid of it. <laughs> all right. Um, if you're going to be using a laminator, use a folded up piece of eight and a half by 11 copy paper. That's all you need. Eight and a half by 11 copy paper. Okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna use an am, uh, a laminator, it's fine. Use a piece of copy paper. Do not use these in a laminator. Okay. Do not use these in a laminator. You can just use a piece of copy paper or parchment paper. Will work in a laminator. All right. All right. All right. All right. How's everybody doing? I need to grab a drink of water. Hold on a second. It's a lot of talking. I think I'd be used to it by now. Can you use paper with the mink or is that too much? Instead of the transfer sheets, you can, Kay. Yeah, you can use copy paper. It doesn't matter. All right. Wow. 200 people are watching. Does that many people get new foiling devices? All right, now is the hard part. This is advanced foiling. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about hot foiling. So for all of you that know everything about toner and mink foiling now, prepare for mine to be blown, okay? <laughs> um, if you are writing, keep taking notes. If you have questions, Please do ask your questions. If you want to ask your questions privately, please email me at foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com. I have no problem answering all of your questions. Everybody has questions. I know if you're new to foiling, it can be very confusing. Just moving some things out of the way here. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention. Do not use pixie spray on your stencils when you are going to be using the deco foil duo gel method because your foil will stick to wherever there was pixie spray. So if you're going to be using foiling through stencils, please do not use any kind of spray. Okay. I'm enabling. What am I enabling? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Gloria says I'm ready now. Okay, hot foiling, hot foiling, hot foiling. So many things to talk about in hot foiling. And again, I, I, would, I would love to demonstrate everything, but if I demonstrate everything, um, you guys are going to be here for a whole week. So this is just a high overview of what all of these things do and then you have to go back and watch my other videos and if you want to know more details watch those videos if you still have questions after you watch those videos then send me an email oh i probably should plug my, my battery's dying already okay here we go all right all right let me talk about what hot foiling is so you guys understand it. And I want you to make a list of what companies have hot foil. Okay. So the biggest difference between hot foiling and toner foiling is hot foiling has... Hot foiling has adhesive built into the foil. Okay, 
So thank you, Jerry. Jerry just sent us a donation. Okay, so everything I just talked about with toner and mink foiling, you guys really need to draw a line on your notes because they are two different systems, two different worlds. This almost needs to be a whole separate video, but I wanted it all to be one video because people watch one video, they don't watch the other video. The people that left early are not gonna understand what I'm talking about, and those are the people that are gonna start asking questions. So you really need to understand that it's two different foiling worlds, hot foil and regular foil. Do not confuse the term heat transfer foil. Heat transfer foil is not hot foil, okay? This foil from all of these companies, and I want you to write down what the name of these companies are because I don't want you to make the mistake of buying hot foil or not buying hot foil when you need hot foil. So are you ready to make your list? Okay, so <clears throat> hot foil companies. If you are in the UK, you will have heard of Toto. It is on Create and Craft. Toto is a giant hot foiling machine. I just sold mine. Oh my gosh, that thing was like a big elephant in the room, okay? But I kept the foils because they're hot foils. So Toto is, I believe, only in the UK. It is from Create and Craft. They sell it. Toto is hot foil, okay? It says on here, hot foil rolls, okay? So Toto foil, and it is called Toto, not to do. It is Toto, hot foil, okay? The most Famous hot foil companies are going to be between these three. So we have Couture Creations Go Press and Foil. Okay, this is Couture Creations Go Press and Foil. Raise your hand. Well, you don't have to raise your hand, although I'm not going to know because I can't see you. If you saw this amazing deal on HSN where you got 20 rolls of foil. Oh, I got to have it. 20 rolls of foil. And then you got it home and you realized that you got 20 rolls of hot foil. Oopsie. Okay, a lot of you guys did that. I understand it. Stacy did it and that's how she found me and she's my bestie. So it's all right. Okay, so hot foil. This works in the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil machine. For those of you that order from Scrapbooking Made Simple, Scrapbooking Made Simple only sells hot foil. Okay, HSN, their deals are on hot foil. They do have a couple of rolls of regular foil, but the majority of what HSN sells is hot foil, okay? So Couture Creations Go Press and Foil. Go Press and Foil is a hot foil machine, very similar to the Spellbinders Glimmer. I don't have one in front of me, but that's hot foil, okay? Spellbinders Glimmer. Spellbinders Glimmer sells their hot foil like this. And I do have a Spellbinders link, or you can go check it out at Hobby Lobby. You can buy a single roll, or you can buy a four-pack roll, okay? But when it says Glimmer, when you are buying these Spellbinders hot foil dies that say for the Glimmer system, that is for hot foiling. It is not for die cutting. Okay? So go press and foil glimmer. Here is a tricky one. The Gemini foil press hot foil system. Okay, now, in looking at these two boxes, you would say, hey, they're the same foil. Look, they're both green. One's called Holly, the other one's called Holly. They are boxed up exactly the same way. They both say Gemini foil press. Okay, here is the difference. And I'm gonna teach you the secret here. One is pink, one is purple. They both say paper on them. How do I know which one I have? Look at the rolls. See how this roll is white? And this roll is brown, you want the white roll. And I'll show you why. If you look on the very front, in very small, fine print, I now have to read reading glasses. I'll be 44 next month, you guys. Right here. Okay. 
Do you see the difference? Paper craft foil, multi-surface foil. Same size, same color, same company. Paper craft foil is best for the Gemini foil press machine because this works on low heat setting. This is gonna work on a medium to high heat setting. So if you have the Spellbinders Glimmer machine, if you have the Couture Creations machine, you wanna buy the multi-surface foil. It's very, very important for you to understand the difference between these. This paper craft foil has a lower adhesion rate with the, with the adhesive that's built into this foil. This has a hotter adhesion rate. And the reason they call it multi-surface foil is if you want to foil cork or leather or canvas, anything like that, shirts, anything that you want to multi-surface foil, it's going to be a much hotter heat setting. And we're going to talk about the differences between the two machines too. So if you have the Gemini foil press, buy the paper craft foil. If you have the Spellbinders Glimmer, if you have the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil, buy the multi-surface foil. And you can get this from Craft Stash, Scrapbook.com, HSN, that's where you can get these. Kim, I'm jealous. Okay, so hot foil. Um, we are Memory Keepers Foil Quill. I knew I was gonna do this video for you guys. So I went out and spent some money that I really wasn't wanting to spend, and I bought a foil quill. So foil quill foil comes in two types. You get a long 12 inch roll, and it gives you 96 whole inches of foil. Ooh, generous, not. <laughs> or you can buy these little uh, pre-cut foil sheets. Uh, this is all on sale at Joann's right now. That's where I went right before I filmed this video. I literally was there two hours ago. Um, so they have these sheets at Joann's. They're on sale right now. Everything's on sale foil quill right now. So you can get the rolls or you can get the sheets. And there's a smattering of colors in here. So you have rose gold, pink, fuchsia. Need a couple of different colors here. I think you get three or four of each one. So this one has a little bit of red. There's some fuchsia. Some carnation pink. It's like a rose gold. So a couple different colors. They have blues and greens and silver and gold. Or if you want a, the larger rolls, you can get the big rolls. And what is the foil quill? What does it do? So the foil quill comes in two different size foils. It also comes in two different ways of using it. So they have these foil quill pens, freestyle pen. Okay. And again, these can only be used on the hot foils I've shown you. So any of these can be used with any of these foils here. Do not mix these up with the first hour and a half showing of the toner foils. Okay, so all of this can only be used with hot foils. Any of these hot foils will work. So you basically take this USB. In fact, I'm going to heat this up and show you how to do it. I had to grab my little, my little battery box. So you're going to plug this into, um, if you have like a cell phone charger, a battery box. Okay. And there's a little light on the end of the foil quill here. So we're going to let this sit for a couple minutes while that warms up. And then I'll show you what, what is the big to do about this foiling quill. It comes with a roll of sample foil. comes with instructions. This one is the bold tip. So it comes in a fine point, a bold tip, a regular tip, and a calligraphy tip. So you can buy these individual pens in four different styles. Again, fine, regular, bold, and calligraphy. I do not recommend the fine tip. It rips up everything. Okay. The second way you can buy the foil quill is if you want to use it in your fancy schmancy die cutting machines. So 
Raise your hand if you have a scan and cut, if you have a silhouette machine, if you have a Cricut machine, even Baby Joy will work. And so there are a couple different sizes here. I have the other one in my scan and cut. Yes, and I'll have it. So they sell these also individually or in a kit. We are memory keepers. Yes, it's foil quill. <laughs> and what this does is um, there are these different adapters. Okay. So these have different size tips. So this is the fine tip. You can see how super fine it is. This is the bold tip. I have one more. I have them marked so they work in Baby Joy. And they sell these adapters, and they don't have one for Baby Joy yet. So what happens is these adapters fit your certain machine. So if you have a brother machine, I believe it's letter A or B. If you have a silhouette machine, it's letter A, whatever it is. And as you have these different adapters, you can fit them in your different machines. So the silhouette, the scan and cut, the uh, Cricut, all of those, okay? And same thing, what happens is you plug these into a battery pack. Do not plug these into your scan and cut or your Cricut machine. Plug them into a USB battery pack. And as these heat up, they press down onto your foil. And as they press down onto your foil, whatever design you have selected from your so-called die cutting machine, your electronic die cutter, it will draw through the foil your image and I'm going to show you the basics so because hot foil has adhesive built into it as soon as you heat it up it's going to stick now there is a brand new kit on the block I'm only going to slightly mention the new kit on the block because I don't have a full-size Cricut so Cricut all right so foil quill is made by we are memory keepers we are memory keepers is not owned by Cricut silhouette or brother scan and cut they're their own company so the Cricut, the Cricut machine, um, uh, or sorry, yeah, Cricut said, I don't want you using this in our machine. It could void your warranty. This is not authorized by Cricut. So Cricut came out with their own machine, their own tip, and I don't have an example of it, but it's basically a tip without a USB. And they came out with their own foil, and they are claiming that their foil, and it comes in these little packs, they also have huge 12 by 12 sheets. They are claiming that this foil is Cricut heat uh, pressure activated foil. So kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? I mean, it looks very similar in size. Colors are pretty similar, but no, we don't want you using We Are Memory Keepers in our machine. You got to buy the Cricut one, okay? And what I found out through experimenting is this is actually hot foil. So uh, what Cricut has found is if you put enough pressure on hot foil, it's going to stick to anything because the hot foil has adhesive built into it. Okay, so I want to show you the basics real quick. I'm going to move these two big guys out of the way here. And I'll show you what the basics are to, to the foil quill. Where's that piece of paper? Okay, so I have my foil quill tip heating up here. Oh yeah, it's getting hot. And again, not something you want to do around kids. But let me grab a piece of that. Any of these hot foils will work. So if you already have any of these hot foils, these will all work in the foil quilt system. These are all interchangeable with hot foils. Just like toner foils are interchangeable, hot foils are interchangeable. All right, I see you guys asking questions here. My admins are gonna have to see if they can jump on or read me the questions again. Okay, so this is just a plain white piece of cardstock. Nothing fancy there. Hot foil will stick to anything. You really don't need any special paper for hot foil. So the idea here, whether you have the foil pen, which just allows you people that have beautiful lettering to letter, or you can put it in your machine, make it all electronic, is to write down with the heat...
and as the heat touches the foil, that adhesive gets activated and you can see that foil has switched over. Now I missed a spot, I can't see through this right now and fix it. But you really wanna take your time and go pretty slowly. I bought the bold tip because I don't like the fine one, it's too thin for me, but I thought the bold tip would be nice in you know, just writing out little messages on the inside of the card. And all it's doing is it's just a hot tip pressing into the foil, and you can see that's in there. So the pens are designed if you have your own free-handed lettering and you want to do it. The machines are if you want the machine, you, you know, we all can download 8 million designs on our machines now. So if I wanted a pretty peony flower, I find the design, put it in my sheen, I tell the silhouette to trace it out, and it do, 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 traces it out for me, okay? All right, so I really didn't want to buy this because I don't do anything with my <laughs> handwriting, but I know you guys were going to ask. So here is the Cricut foil. And I just wanted to make a point here that even though Cricut figured out that this is hot foil, they are stating that their system works with just pressure. And that's because, again, um, you can see there it's hot foil. So you want to do this pretty slowly. Take your time. Don't rush it. The more pressure you put, the more heat it gets, the better you're going to get in your final results. So you can see I wrote that very slowly, took my time, and I got much better results than the first time. So um, if you guys have bought the Cricut, the little doodad that goes in the Cricut machine, the little knob, it does not require heat. You can still use any of these other foils, but don't tell them I told you guys that. I'm bursting their bubble there. You can use foil quill with stencils. Yeah, absolutely. Let me grab one here. Here's one from the Colorful Life Designs. Yeah, a metal stencil would be better. I'm just going to do this real quickie here. Because you could melt your plastic, obviously. I do have my metal stencil somewhere, but I'll do this just for you guys. Uh, we'll see. Now this one's not, not fine enough of a point for me to get in there. Obviously, keep your fingers out of the way. Keep little ones out of the way. Keep pets out of the way. When you are done using it, unplug it. Safety first. Okay, so I just traced my mermaid. Ta-da! We have a mermaid. What about a cardstock stencil if you have a scan and cut? Well, yeah, if it's thick cardstock, you, you mean if you cut out of this and you wanted to use it as a stencil? Yeah, that would work. The tip does get hot. This didn't melt anything, I think because I moved fairly quickly. I mean, I wouldn't let this sit on here. Let me see if it's gonna melt it. It's not melting it. No, it's not melting it. I mean, it barely put a dent in it. So it's not hot enough to melt the plastic. Now I wouldn't let it set on there, but. Yeah, so I want to bring up one other company here of when you guys were writing down hot foil companies. Those of you that are looking for, you guys know what I tell you, I'm the frugalist of frugals here. Um, a, a new hot foil company that I stumbled upon accidentally. If you are in the UK, there is a foiling group on Facebook and her name is Di, like Diana. I think her name is Diana Everett. I will get you guys her name. She's in the UK. She sells rolls and rolls of hot foil. The name of the group is Hot Foiling With, and you can say Hot Foiling With um, Foil Quill, Hot Foiling With the Gemini, Hot Foiling, but she has all of these UK groups, and she sells rolls and rolls of hot foil. If you are in the US, 
I'm going to ask you to go to Facebook and check out this company called Blue Bonnet. Again, I have no affiliation link with Blue Bonnet. Um, Blue Bonnet is just a company I found by accident. And she has been very generous to send me her foils to um, sample. And I bought... <laughs> I bought the rest of these foils, although she keeps sending me more foils. So um, this company, I just want to show you the difference here. You get a longer roll. So here you can see the normal size hot foil roll. You're getting a little bit longer roll. And she has so many beautiful colors and textures. So here is a nice satin blue. Here is a glitter blue. Here is a green with facets. Here is green with... Um, uh, what do you call those sequins we have purples we have fuchsias of course we have gold holographic silver sequins silver holographic we have red lots of sparkle this is all hot foil and she calls it foil quill or hot stamping foil she's in the united states the name of the company is blue bonnet the only way you can buy from her is online through her facebook group you just message her and she even sent me this sample of clear foils which i have not had a chance to play with but i will i promise you guys um but that's a company i would also check out if you're looking for hot foils they are facebook based yes okay um all right, do we understand the foil quill, the big and the little foil quill, and what is hot foil? Hot foil has adhesive in it. What happens if you take hot foil and you run it through the mink machine? I got this piece of hot foil. I want to foil over my toner sheet. What Can someone tell me what's going to happen? They had samples here. Yes, Star, the foil quill foil from Blue Bonnet is hot foil. Kim says nothing. Noelle says nothing. Noelle, you're not paying attention. Okay. Anytime you take hot foil and you run it through a heat source, you are going to have over foiling. That's why it's important to know what kind of foils you have, what company you bought your foils from, you want to leave your foils in the original packaging, okay? I know sometimes our packaging gets ripped and our boxes lids come off and we think, oh, I'm just going to throw all this in a drawer and it's going to look fabulous. And then you know what happens? You lose what kind of foil it is and you don't recognize that this is hot foil and you go to run it through your mink machine and you are going to have extreme, extreme over foiling, okay? I want to show you guys some examples of hot foiling here because I'm not actually going to be hot foiling, but I just want you to know what hot foiling looks like. Okay, so hot foil has adhesive built into it. As soon as you put that hot foil in contact with a heat source, it's going to stick to whatever it can stick to. Remember how I told you the laminating sheets have um, adhesive inside the laminating sheet? You kind of need to think of hot foil the same way. When hot foil gets near heat, it's going to want to stick. So how we use hot foils, all of these beautiful designs you guys are seeing, these are all from hot foil stamps. Now, hot foil stamps are not actually stamps. They're basically dies. Deco foil is not a hot foil, correct. You cannot use that in this system. Only the companies I named can be in a hot foil system. Spellbinders Glimmer, We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill, Cricut, um, Cricut Hot Foil, uh, Pressure Foil, they call it, Toto Foil, and Gemini foil press foil. All right. So all of these images are hot foil. And hot foil dyes look like, yes, yeah, separate your foils. Right. So 
No, these are not toner sheets. This is hot foiling. Our, um, these have to be pressed into your image. So I'm going to move. Everybody understand which of these are foil hot foil companies? Do we understand why hot foil is different? Because it's got glue in it. Okay. These are the two hot foiling systems I use the most. And you're going to ask me, what is the difference and why do I have two of them? Well, I have two of them because I'm the foiling empress. Um, <laughs> okay. The reason I have two of them is because, um, you guys, I do a ton of videos. As you know, I personally prefer the Gemini foil press machine. The reason I personally prefer this machine is because it has, um, low, medium, and high heat temperature setting. It has a timer that I can set on uh, five seconds, 25 seconds, five minutes, whatever I need to set it on. And this fits 100% perfectly in the Gemini Junior machine. You basically put your hot foil die down, and I'm going to show you guys that. And then you're going to put your piece of paper over it. And... You're going to run it through your Gemini just like if you were die cutting, but it's not going to cut anything. What it's going to do is, again, it's going to take that heat activated foil and that heat is going to transfer from my hot foil stamp or my hot foil die. It's going to transfer onto my paper. So I would let this, if this were plugged in, this would get hot. This is not, um, this is a hot foil stamp. This would get hot, and then it's going to go through my machine, and then when it comes out, I'm going to have these beautiful designs that I just showed you, okay? The Spellbinders Glimmer Machine is the same premise. However, the Spellbinders Glimmer Machine does not, um, does not have any kind of I've got crumbs on there. Does not have any kind of. That's going to drive me nuts. I don't know where that came from. It does not have any heat settings on it. You basically turn it on. When the light turns green, you run it through your Spellbinders Platinum machine or you run it through um, your big, big kick or big shot machine. This is not going to fit in the Gemini machine. Okay, this platform is too wide and too thick, and it will not fit in the Gemini machine. And this is not designed to go in any other die cutting machine other than the Gemini machine. Okay, so if you have a Gemini Junior, a Gemini Junior, you want to buy the foil press machine. Okay, now. Gemini just came out with a larger platform, so it's much wider now. So if you have the full-size Gemini, you can now add the foil press in the Gemini machine. Okay. If you have any other die-cutting system, a manual system, you have a big, big kick, you have a big shot, you have the new Stampin' Up! die-cutting machine, which is basically a big shot, you have the Spellbinders Glimmer Platinum machine, any of those other machines, the Vagabond, this is the machine you need to get. You cannot interchange the machines and the die cutting systems. The die cutting systems must match. Now, uh, no, Tracy, you cannot put it in the Gemini sideways. You have to buy an adapter plate for this to go through. It will not work any other way. Um, I will tell you that Crafter's Companion is a stickler on sticking to the rules. They will not uh, honor your warranty if you do not use this machine in the way that it's intended. So I'm going to tell you right now, do not use Toto dies in it. Toto dies are way too heavy and way too thick. Do not use embossing folders in this machine, okay? Embossing folders and the foily press system do not work together. If you do that, you are going to void your machine. Do not use this in any other die cutting system other than a Gemini or a Gemini Junior with the appropriate adapter plates. Okay? If you have unlimited budget and you can buy whatever you want, 
or a birthday list or something like that. Um, yes, so like Noelle said, if you have an unlimited budget and you don't have a preference to die cutting machines or foiling machines, I am 100% always going to recommend the Gemini foil press machine with the Gemini Junior. And I'll tell you why. If you go back to my earlier videos, I had the original Go Press and Foil machine, which is the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil machine. The Couture Creations Go Press and Foil machine is almost identical, almost identical to the Spellbinders Glimmer machine. The difference is it has a clear plate on the top, a hinged plate. Okay, so it has it has a here a clear hinge plate on here. Okay, but what it didn't have is the same thing. Like you turned it on, you basically counted or set a timer for thirty seconds. You put your die on, you ran it through your machine a few times, you cranked it up, and then um, it would foil for you. But it was really hit or miss with the Go Press and foil machine. Now, I know some people like Anne. She's in France. She's amazing with the Go Press and Foil machine, but that's because she, that's the only machine she has. She's been making a lot of time and effort into knowing what kind of papers, what kind of foils, what kind of timing, what kind of shims. It really is, for me, a difficult machine to learn, okay? It's the same thing with the Glimmer machine. The only reason I purchased this machine and I was not going to purchase this machine is because so many of you don't have the Gemini Junior and were asking me foiling questions and I didn't want to leave any of you guys hanging, so I did purchase this machine. So this machine, you'll see, it's really a trial and error machine for me. I also had to purchase a Spellbinders uh, die cutting machine, the Platinum, to go with this system. And for the money that I spent, I would have been better off just buying a Gemini Junior and a Gemini foil press because this machine is effortless. I don't have to think about the timing, the foil. It's so much easier. I don't have to put any shims in it. All I do is put my die down. This is a small die. I know this is 15 seconds with the Gemini paper craft foil. It's 15 seconds, you guys. I run it through my machine and it's done and it foils perfectly. If I use Gemini paper craft foil on this machine, it's going to overfoil. Now, the opposite is true too. If I use any of these other foils, the Gemini multi-surface foil, the Glimmer foil, the Go Press and foil, the foil quill foil. I have to heat this machine up to a hotter setting. It has to be on medium or high heat. It's usually 25 seconds or around there. But I know I can use these other foils. Now, what happens if I consistently use these other foils is this plate gets so hot it starts to warp and it starts to warp and bend off of the Gemini system. So if you're going to be doing a lot of hot foiling with the Gemini system, I'm going to always recommend the Gemini paper craft foil for this system, okay? Paper craft foil. Now, listen, I don't wanna put you in a box and say that's all you can use. You can use those other foils, but just keep in mind, the hotter you use the system, the more you use it, you're going to cause that plate to warp and bend. It will flatten out once the machine cools down. I now have two heat plates for that reason because my original heat plate is warped in the middle and I knew that was gonna happen. So this machine has a thicker platform. It works on a much hotter heat. You are not going to have that warping. Obviously, this is a way thicker platform. You're not going to have that warping because they know that they designed this system to work on a much hotter scale. So see the difference in the, in the platforms, how much thinner this one is compared to this one? Okay, so this one, this one is prone to warping. It is going to happen. But if you use that on a low heat, it's less likely to happen. This machine gets extremely hot. The longer you use this machine, the hotter it gets. I believe the better that it foils. Um, but it, the, the biggest difference between the two machines is having the ability to control your heat and timer with the Gemini foil press versus just kind of figuring it out with the glimmer and what kind of die cutting system you have. Okay, this machine does have, as Lisa's saying, a bigger 
uh, learning curve, like the Go Press and Foil versus this machine. This machine is just a little bit easier out of the box to learn and do, okay? Now, uh, Peggy, you can use the Spellbinders Glimmer with the Big Shot. Yes, now, um, Kay, that's not true. Um, <laughs> the Gemini Foil Press can also be used with the Big Shot. I'm not supposed to tell you that. I'm not supposed to recommend that. There is a secret sandwich. Um, if you really want to know what the secret sandwich is, email me and I will tell you what the secret sandwich is, but I will deny telling you what the secret sandwich is. Okay? So you can use the Gemini with a big shot. It is not as good as foiling with the foil press or with the Gemini Junior. Okay. So the replacement plates, Tracy's asking... Are, uh, is about $60. So I'll show you. This is my original plate. And you can see it's well loved. You can see that it's got some cuts and things in it. Um, right now it's pretty flat. And that's because when I am done using this, I put it underneath my entire Gemini Junior machine. You know, that big heavy thing. I put that on there and you can see it is pretty flat at this point. It's not really too bad, but as this would, if I were plugging this in and getting it hot, you'll see that this is my older plate will warp a lot quicker because it's an older one. Now, I will say it's been about two years of heavy usage. I don't think you guys are gonna use it as heavy as I used it. Um, Crafter's Companion was generous enough to send me this as a prototype to try it out. I kind of broke some of the rules so they weren't happy with me, but I broke those rules so you guys would not get in trouble for breaking your machines or doing anything. So I do want to heed that word of advice to you guys. There are certain things I'm going to say do and don't do. I am doing that for your protection. I do not want you, this is not a cheap machine. It's a hundred dollar machine and your, your Gemini is what? Now it's not $50 anymore. They're $130, $150 for Gemini. So before you break a machine and cost yourself $250, please listen to my advice. And I'm the number one advice I'm going to say is use the Gemini foil press with the Gemini Junior. If you have to go to a full-size Gemini, from what I understand, the sandwiches are tighter, but I don't have a full-size Gemini, but I understand that the people that have the full-size Gemini don't have as good of results as the Gemini Junior. However, they do have a bigger plate now, so it may be better results. I don't know that for a fact. Do not put embossing folders in your hot foiling machine with the Gemini. Do not do that. If you are going to be so bent on trying to do foiling with embossing folders, Go search it on YouTube. There are other teachers that will teach you that. I'm not going to jeopardize my machine, and I'm not going to teach anybody to do that. It is not recommended. You will destroy your machines. Do not do that. If you want to do hot foiling with embossing folders, and yes, I have done it, you need to do it on this machine. Okay? All right. I'm just trying to read comments. Are there any comments or questions that I meant? Okay, are the foil stamps and dies interchangeable between machines? Thank you for asking that. Sherry absolutely can answer that. So let me show you what, what are the different die companies that create hot foil dies? All right, so as I mentioned before, the company Toto is a British company. This company is the only dies you cannot use in the Gemini Spellbinders. I'm sorry, in the Gemini Foil Press. And I want to show you guys side-by-side -side comparison. Thank you, by the way. One of you guys sent this to me to put in the giveaway pile, and it's a perfect example. So... This company, again, is out of England, out of the UK. Tracy, I would say if your um, machines, if yours is warping, you will have way too much heat. You need to start at a low heat for 15 seconds. And don't put any kind of extra shims or sandwiches or plates on there. It should just be your die and your top plate, and that's it. So if you have warping, Tracy, back the heat off. It should be low 15 seconds. Okay, so I want to show you guys this. So 
So when you buy a traditional die, I hope most people understand what a die is. A die is what gets pressed into paper and it will cut out the designs of the paper, right? Where's that little sample paper I was working on? So. So when you are die cutting, you're putting a die. It has these really high, sharp edges. They're, they're steel dies. And it's going to cut out the design. So you can see here, I don't need to poke all these pieces out, but you can see we have this beautiful, intricate, ornate frame here. There's another die that cuts out the outside. But it pierces the paper and it cuts it out, okay? So that's what a die is. This is a die. Okay, so everywhere there is a raised edge, that raised edge is going to cut out paper, okay? Hot foil dies or hot foil stamps, a lot of people get confused because, hey, those look pretty similar, right? They're both made out of metal. It's kind of raised. There's one huge difference. This doesn't have any cutting, okay? So... Even though you think, oh, it's a metal die, it's going to do the same thing, this is not going to cut. Now, this particular die does look like it'll cut the center out here, but I'd have to run it through. What this is designed to do is this is designed to um, press into the hot foil with heat. So as these platforms heat up, as this platform heats up and the heat goes through, and then I put my piece of paper on, I put my foil on, and it's always pretty side down. Remember, this is glue on the back side of the foil, right? So as my die heats up, pretty side down, that glue is now going to have contact with my paper. So as I put my paper down and I run this through my die cutting system, I take the whole platform, put my top plates on and I run it through my die cutting system when I reveal this wherever this had contact on these on these decorative flat pieces it will press through the hot foil the glue gets activated and now sticks to my paper okay same thing over here the glue gets activated all of these beautiful intricate designs they get hot they activate the glue in the foil they stick to my paper okay so that's the huge difference between hot foiling and toner foiling you have to use these special systems with hot foil and you have to use these special dies um to real quick answer the question on um Tracy, I'm going to come back to your question. But to answer your questions about what kind of dye companies make hot foil dyes, right? So Toto is the company in England. These are silver. So when you buy these, these are silver. They say letterpress hot foil plates. These are not to be used in the Gemini system. This is the only one that is excluded from the Gemini system, and that's because of how thick they are. They can be used in the Glimmer and the Couture Creations Go Press and Foil. Okay? They can be used there. Um, obviously, we have Gemini, which is Crafter's Companion. Everybody knows them. And these are all interchangeable. So here's how Crafter's Companion has so many different designs. They have background plates. They have um, sentiments. So these are just some of the ones that you can get from Crafter's Companion. There's all kinds of different sizes. You can use these in either machine. Okay? Okay. When you start to see the dark gray ones, like this one, 
These are specialty stamp and cut. So what it will do is not only will it foil, but it will cut an image. So this will foil the center and then it will cut around it. Here is a butterfly one. I cut it, but I didn't foil it. But you can see where it's pressed in. If I had put foil in there, this would be foiled and it would cut out a butterfly. This would be foiled and it would cut out a dragonfly. Okay, so that's Crafter's Companion. They come in silver and gray. And then there's Spellbinders. And Spellbinders are gold. Now, this gets a little confusing because if you buy Spellbinders dies, Spellbinders dies are also gold. So how do you know the difference if it's a regular die or if it's a hot foil die? Well, in the top corner when you buy it, it says Glimmer Hot Foil System. So if you buy this, it's not going to cut. It's going to give you this foiled impression when you foil with it, hot foil with it. And this can only work with hot foil. You cannot bring toner or mink foil into this. It will not work. This is one from Picket Fence Studios. Um, so most of mine are Gemini or Spellbinders. And my favorite things now has the happy birthday one. So I'll show you those samples again. But these are specifically designed for hot foiling. You cannot use deco foil. You cannot use mink foil. You cannot use um, Gina K. Any of those foils. It has to be the specific hot foils I told you. Those are the only ones that will work. And I'll show you my samples again. So this is a happy birthday one. This is from My Favorite Things. I did two videos on this. I did one video using the Gemini, and I did one video using the Spellbinders Glimmer. Okay, so this is from My Favorite Things. It's just a fun little happy birthday. Um, this is Gemini Spellbinders. Gemini. Gemini, Spellbinders, Gemini, Gemini and Spellbinders, this is Gemini, this is Picket Fence Studios with Spellbinders, Gemini, 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 this is My Favorite Things, Gemini, Gemini, My Favorite Things, so you get the point. So all of these had to be hot foiled onto here. So all of these came off of a die and they were put through, through one of these two machines to get hot foiled. Okay, so it's very important that you understand the difference between hot foiling machines, hot foiling foils, the systems, because the biggest mix up people have is they assume when they buy foil that all foil is the same and they end up using hot foil in their mink machine and they get tremendous over foiling and uh, vice versa. People try to use toner foil in their hot machines and then they don't understand why it doesn't stick. So you really need to educate yourself on what is it you want to do? What do you want for your end product? Do you want to sign and hand letter all of your cards? Then you want to go with the foil quill. If you want to copy designs off of your machines, then maybe you want to go with a foil quill for your silhouette or your scan and cut. If you want it to be quick and easy, get yourself a mink and buy yourself toner sheets or buy yourself a laser printer. If you want to use fancy dyes and make things like, you know, pop off the page, then you want to go with a hot foiling system. But there's a lot of things to take into consideration here. You cannot just buy a foiling system and think you're going to jump in and learn everything about foiling. It really takes time to learn. Like Kim said, not all foils are created equal. There are two different systems and a lot of people get confused and they say, okay, well, I have the foil quill system. Can I use mink foil on that? No, it's two different systems. What is your end outcome that you want? You have to really understand that. You can't just envision, I'm going to buy foil and I'm going to buy all these foil machines and I'm just going to make cool stuff. 
because uh, you're going to get in over your head. You're going to say, my mink machine doesn't work. My hot foil foil doesn't work. I'm, you know, and you're going to get frustrated because you're going to overfoil or you're going to underfoil and you're just not going to, you know, you're not going to be happy with the end result. And it's because like everything we do, it takes time to learn. This is a craft. It's not instant. If it were instant, I wouldn't have 800 videos on it. So please take the time to understand the difference between hot foils and regular foils. Please take the time to understand the difference between a mink and a laminator. Understand the difference between papers that you use, heat variations, different foiling manufacturers. Um, these all play a part. And if you have questions, again, join us at the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook. I break, there are literally what we call units, which is the encyclopedia of foiling, where I break all of this down. It is written for you that all of these companies here are hot foils. All of these companies here are toner foils. If you're going to try to achieve this foiling result, you want to use product A, B, and C. If you're going to try to achieve this foiling result, try to use this. If you're having spotting, try the, to do this. If you have overfoiling, check this. I mean, I literally can tell from a post and a question within 20 seconds, I know what you did wrong. You're using the wrong foil. You're using the wrong paper. You're using a laminator. You're not using a mink you're not letting your laminator heat up hard hot enough i mean i i know from looking at it and i appreciate you guys jumping in and saying well i use a laminator i have the royal sovereign okay i don't have the royal sovereign laminator but 60 dollars for a laminator for me is overpriced when i can spend 10 dollars more and get a mink and do way more with it personal preference in terms of value and what i can do with it a laminator is going to have one, maybe two heat settings. A mink is going to have five heat settings. I can laminate with it, and I'm going to get pressure, which is going to give me better foiling. So it all depends on your budget, what you want your outcome to be, how much are you willing to invest in learning, how much are you willing to invest in your budget. If you have a very low budget, that's okay. We can show you low budget ways of foiling. If you have an unlimited budget, then I'll show you unlimited ways of foiling. Everybody is different. Don't ever feel like you have to step up to the standards of anybody else. Whatever makes you happy. Use what you have and start step by step and working up to improving your foiling. Don't ever feel like you have to go from, you know, not being able to foil to beautiful foiling. Because sometimes you can do that and sometimes you can't. So these are just different results of foiling. And I want you guys to start typing your questions because I just went over two and a half hours of foiling. Um, paper. Nora's asking about paper. So, Nora, if you're going to be foiling, I would say your best paper for all around good results, whether it's toner foiling or hot foiling, is the Hamilco Smooth or... Or, or glossy paper, which is on my Amazon shop, the smoother the paper, the coated paper, it's going to work better. Not photo paper, okay? Do not confuse the two. But I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples here from some different companies of things that I have done. Um, so this is through stencil. So this is a Gina K stencil. I use the Deco Foil Duo Gel. You let it dry completely. You take the foil and you can choose to either run the foil through your laminator or your mink, or you can run it through your die cutting system. I prefer the heat method because it smooths out the foil and then the paste to give you a more even look. It gives it some cool dimension, um, but it really is nice because there is some dimension. It pops up off the page. Deco Foil Duo Paste is what you want to buy. And if you guys can help support me, this is a completely free class by please using my affiliate links. Like I said, I went out and bought a Glimmer Machine, a Spellbinders Platinum, a Foil Quill Machine. I bought the Cricut Foil. The money that I get from you guys donating through PayPal, through Super Chats, through using my affiliate links, all goes into me purchasing more products so I can share this 
knowledge and information with you guys. So I really, really appreciate if you can please use my affiliate links. It does not cost you anything else. I have affiliate links for scrapbook.com, Craft Stash in the United States, Craft Stash in the UK, Amazon, Thermoweb, DecoFoil, Catherine Pooler. So many different companies I can hook you up with if you can help us out. Okay. Um, this is a Unity toner sheet. So Unity Crafts, this is already a pre-printed toner sheet. All I did was um, foil, uh, rainbow foil on it. That's it. You can pick that up from ThermoWeb. This is a hot foil. Spellbinders hot foil. Um, this one, I believe these are Unity. That one's Unity. I think this one is Crafty Critter. This one's also Crafty Critter, and this one's also Crafty Critter. And of course, there are companies like Kitchen Sink Stamps. If you have a laser printer, I would strongly advise that you play around with printing from your laser printer, printing, figuring out your best settings. Everyone's printer is different. For my brother printer, um, 600 DPI works okay, but when I print, I do, like I said, I do it so that the sheet feeds in the front, comes out of the back, and I do toner fixation on it, and I put the setting as thick paper. And by using the Hamilco Super Smooth Paper, I get really good results when I'm printing my own toner sheets and foiling them. And it makes me really, really happy when I can make this at home on a full 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper instead of having to buy it from another company. I understand that everybody has a laser printer, but if you have a laser printer, I would I would challenge you to explore. You can download free images. You have images in your silhouette, in your scan and cut. We've all got free images we can download off the internet. And print it yourself. Print it yourself if you can. And I'm going to challenge you if you can afford to find one of those minks on sale to switch from your laminator to your mink, it's really going to make a huge difference going from a laminator to a mink. Um, toner fixation is how quickly the toner sticks to the paper. Okay. So uh, I can give you a visual. I'll give you a visual. I like to give you guys visuals. So, let's pretend this is the microscopic particles of toner. This is just black embossing powder, by the way, okay? If you don't have the correct settings in your printer, what's going to happen when you go to print it through the machine? As the machine goes through the printer, do we see what's happening here? The toner's kind of moving around until it gets heat applied. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of your machine. They're microscopic specks of toner. And when you go to foil on this, the foil sticks to everything. So what toner fixation does, let me clean up my mess here. Toner fixation is going to help that process by kind of guiding it along. So let me give you an example here. Embossing powder is the enemy of foiling, just so you guys know, and so is non-sticky stamps. Okay, we're gonna use this stamp as an example. So now pretend I've set my machine up for toner fixa fixation and I want to feed it from front to back. What toner fixation is going to do for you is basically this. It's going to keep your toner where you want it. So as it's going through... The laser machine is going through the printer and it's printing. It's not moving until we can get the heat to it. And then once we get the heat to the toner, okay, 
and it runs through the machine, it's fixed. It's not going to move. So instead of us having a huge toner mess everywhere, it's fixated that toner and applied the heat so that toner does not get smudged and smeared as it's going through the process. Does that make sense as a visual? Does it make a big mess of embossing powder all over my desk? If you are going to do stamping, yes, pure black stamping, you want, excuse me, you want to scan your images with pure black stamping. I would recommend VersaFine Claire Nocturne Ink or Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink, either one of these. You want it to be super black. You're going to scan it. You have to have a scanner into your computer. And then you're going to either print it from your laser printer or you got to take it to FedEx or Kinko's or one of, the, one of those places and you got to photocopy it with a Xerox toner machine. You guys have some amazing questions tonight. Yes. Stacy says fixation is also referred to as finishing. Yes. I can't tell you the different settings because everybody has different machines, but just like, uh, just like you have, um, how can I explain this? Just like we have different levels of ink from pigment ink to dye ink to stays on ink to, um, you know, hybrid inks, there's different types of printers. I don't know how each machine is going to work. It depends on what you want your end outcome to be. It depends on what kind of paper you're using, what kind of image you're using, what kind of printer you have. The, the least expensive printers do work. I would say you need a minimum rating of 600 DPI and you want to make sure it can accept 80 pound, um, at up to 80 pound, if you can do higher, that's better, paper. Most computer paper is 65 pound weight or text weight, um, lighter than that. When we're doing thick cardstock, like this is uh, um, accent opaque, 120 pound, my machine will take this no problem. But my machine has a front feeding door and a back door. Not every machine has that. So if your machine can't handle the paper and it doesn't have at least 600 DPI, you're probably not going to get good results. It's, if it's an inexpensive just print work documents or school documents, it's not going to work. Now, vice versa, you do not need a full-on color printer copier. My laser printer was $69. Um, Tracy, you're going to need to go back to the very beginning of this video. The first hour and a half, I talked only about toner and mink foiling. So, yes, you, I talked about that. You want to go back to the very beginning, Tracy, and watch that on the replay. I have the Brother printer, and I just linked on Amazon. It's not the Wi-Fi version. I do have the Wi-Fi version. I don't know if that matters to you or not, but... Amazon just got them in stock. They're $99 for just like mine, except mine has Wi-Fi. If you want Wi-Fi, we can recommend some other printers for you. And Tracy uses the, um, Stacy, sorry, Stacy uses the Canon printer. All of these things are recommended in my Amazon store under the toner folder. Yep. No problem, Tracy. I understand. I've been on for a really long time. Yeah, sometimes you can get the ones with the scanners. It's a scanner, printer, copier in one. Absolutely. And again, I know some of you are in the UK. Some of you are in Australia. I understand in, you know, in Canada, it's going to be different for everybody. All I can say is there are a whole bunch of people in our group. We have over 1,800 people in our Foiling Snobs Club group. Make friends with people that are outside the area. I know like Mexico is in the UK. Um, I know that um, Michelle is in um, 
Australia. So we have different people in different parts of the country that can help you out. Lee, um, he's our UK coordinator, Lee Walker. He can help you guys out. So just reach out and say, hey, I'm in Australia. I'm in the UK. I'm in the Netherlands. I need help finding foil or a printer or a mink. What stores can you guys recommend? And most people will try to help you out as best as they can. Yep. Um, if you are printing in color on your laser printer, switch it to black and white. Do not do color. It does not help at all. You want black toner printed in. Yep. Uh, Mary, yeah, you need to feed it through the front one sheet at a time. You cannot stack them one sheet at a time. And make sure you go into settings and you change the settings to thick cardstock. But if you try to do one, more than one at a time, it's not going to work. You have to do one at a time. Hamilco 80 pound semi gloss or glossy paper is what I'm going to recommend. And as I mentioned before, my Amazon shop, I have both listed. It's the same manufacturer. I don't know why one is listed as glossy and one's listed as semi-gloss. They are identical. They are exactly the same. Um, but I would get the 80 pound. That's the best weight for me that I've been using because once, once it's done foiling or printing out, you're going to put this on heavier card stock anyway. So you don't really need heavier card. And honestly, the heavier the card, the harder it is to foil it because that heat has to pass through all of that. That's why I don't like black foiling, and I did do a video on black foiling. So if you guys are looking for black foiling results, go check out my video on black foiling because this paper is so porous. It is very thick. It is very hard to get this foil to go through. But we did find two winners. One company is out of the UK, and one company is the Hamilco. Um, so we did have you know, some differences in foil here, but you can see this is very thick black cardstock and it's spotted all over. And that's because this paper is just, it's too heavy. It's too porous to accept the foil. So heavier is not always better when it comes to foiling. The smoother the paper, the better when it comes to foiling. Um, Mashiko, the number one winner was the UK paper. It was, hold on. Hold on. Hold, Mashiko. This is the number one black cardstock, Craft Essentials. Lee sent it to me. Okay, I have kept you guys here for two hours and 45 minutes. If you learned something about foiling, please give me a thumbs up. If you're catching this on the replay, please watch the whole video, even if you don't watch it all in one sitting, you know, break it up, make it a mini series, do a half an hour every night, take notes, ask questions. You can post your questions down in the description below. I will try to link everything that I showed tonight or all of my links for you guys to, if you want to go do some shopping. Um, and if you um, are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and please join us at the Foiling Snobs Club in Facebook. We have a wonderful group, no drama, very supportive. We do everything, stamping, card making, foiling. Um, what made me want to become a, oh, I see a couple questions here I missed. See, I have the best admins because they are helping me out. Okay. Um, okay. So let me ask her a couple of these questions here. <laughs> Okay, so I started off foiling, well, I'm a paper crafter just like you guys are, and one of the design teams I was able to be a part of was the Creative Vision Stamps design team, which has now, the shop has now retired, and she was really tough on me. She wanted my cards to be perfectly beautiful, and if I, you know, sent her a card and 
my foiling was not completely beautiful. She literally was like, that's not good enough. I need to show people how good foiling can come out. So she really pushed me to do better, and I do not regret it. I am so glad that my foiling went from spotted foiling specs, which honestly, you guys, I was like, looks good to me. I don't see what the problem is. But now when I look back at that and I see what it can become, it's a huge difference, and we joked around about making, so our group was originally the Foiling and Stamping Club. That's where FSC came from, and, you know, my team kind of made fun of me and said, oh, Nancy's the Foiling Empress. She knows everything about foiling, and so we call it the Foiling Snobs Club, but we're really not snobs. It's a lot of fun, and we want to make sure that everybody understands you spent good money on these supplies, just like when you buy stamps and inks and paper and markers and pencils. I want you to understand how to use the supplies that you spent money on. I don't want you to be discouraged and quit. It takes time to learn. There's a learning curve. But once you get the basics of it, it's like riding a bike. You you just continue to make beautiful things. And there's so many. I mean, I've shown you guys so many beautiful samples of things that you can make and so many different ways of foiling. So don't give up. Keep trying. Somebody asked, what kind of foil did I use on the snowflake? Um, that deco foil was iridescent silver, and um, you can pick that up either in the H and H shop. It's iridescent silver, or um, I believe deco foil has the same thing. Heidi Swap Mink has the same one. Just a better value if you go to H and H foil and pick it up there. Elizabeth says Hamilco is like a thick photo paper. It's not exactly like photo paper though. So I don't want anybody to be confused. Um, it's not photo paper. It does, this is just, it's just an ultra smooth black cardstock. Okay. I have not found a glossy black cardstock that will work in the mink system. Okay. For hot foiling, yes, I found black, glossy, hard, uh, black, glossy cardstock that will work in hot foiling, but it will not work in the mink machine. So don't be confused. You just kind of have to do a little bit of experimenting. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, what else? I think I'm, I'm just trying to read through your questions. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle's in Australia. Michelle, I know you've tried out Crafty Krita. They, I know, have taken care of you. They're amazing. Uh, Nina Cardstock. Nina is always good. Nina's, you know, when you don't have... Uh, Nina was always my first go-to until I found Hamilco. Um, Hamilco just slightly edges Nina out. But Nina is a super smooth... Now, it has to be Nina Solar White Classic Crest Cardstock. 80 pound. Melody... I would say not to use photo paper because photo paper is so super glossy that your foil could stick to the top coating on photo paper. So I'm going to say no, but it takes practice because, again, there's 80 million different kinds of photo paper. Thank you, Arlene. Yes, if you can share and get more people to follow me, that would be awesome. Um, Tracy says, I'm like an encyclopedia of foiling. I am the empress of foiling. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, Stacy just reiterated what I said about the photo paper having a coating. The wheel of names.com. We're going to have to write that down. Chow, can you write that down? Wheel of names.com. We'll have to try that because it's hard for us to pick winners in the Facebook group. Yes, thank you to my admins. We have Stacy, Chow, and Tracy representing tonight. Ryan has probably got his elbows up in paint right now. If you guys did not know, Ryan is now on scrapbook.com. So he has been doing so much stuff for them, which is super exciting. So make sure you're following Ryan because he has some wonderful adventures coming this year. Um, I also want to announce to you guys that I am going to be transferring over the Mod Squad Challenge after this month to Tracy. She has volunteered to help me with that. I obviously have a lot more on my plate now with Stamp Wars. So Tracy's going to be doing Mod Squad Challenge. She'll be the Kitchen Sink Stamps host for that. I'm still going to be on the Kitchen Sink Stamps design team. But Tracy's going to be doing Mod Squad Challenge. And also I am leaving um, 
the not too shabby shop as of the end of this month but tracy is staying on with them so we love to support not too shabby there is a discount code so you'll be able to use my link until the end of the month and then um, after that we'll remove it from affiliate links and you'll want to go to tracy's page to support not too shabby shop through tracy and get your discount night stacy what kind of paper is the plain one? So I have plain black Hamilco paper and plain white semi-gloss Hamilco paper. Those are the two I use. I prefer a semi-gloss paper. Yep. All right, does anybody have any final questions? We really need to close this out because my admins have their family members to take care of. <laughs> Oh, this plaid paper, plaid is um, Stampin' Up! paper. This is Stampin' Up! paper I tried to foil on. And for those of you that did purchase Stampin' Up! from me, you should have received the brand new January catalog, which is the spring catalog. If you purchased Stampin' Up! from me and you did not get the catalog, please let me know. I think it was anybody who purchased $50 or more in the last year. Um... If you are interested in a PDF of the catalog and you think you may want to purchase from me, shoot me an email at foilingsnobsclub at gmail.com and I will send you a PDF copy of the catalog for you to look at. Orders start January 2nd for that, for Stampin' Up! Oh, Bernie, hopefully, yeah, that'll be better for you. Uh, Arlene, yes, I will link everything for you. And the video for that is finally found a black paper for foiling. Yep. Okay. So I'm sorry to keep everybody on here so late. If you are just jumping on, the first hour and a half is on toner slash mink foil using your laminator or preferably your mink machine. And the second hour and a half is on hot foiling using the Gemini foil press, the Glimmer machine from Spellbinders, or the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill machine. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions. Please join the Foiling Snobs Club at Facebook and we'll help you out as much as we can. Sherry, send me an email, hun, and I'll take care of you. So toner fixation, add more heat during printer. Yes, it basically, yes unifies the heat. Yep, it cooks it. Okay, good night everybody. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are secret watchers in the background, please consider subscribing. Comment down below if you have any questions, if you learned something, or if you have any questions. Again, it'll take me a little time, but I will try to link all of the products that I showed you guys tonight. And it does take 24 hours for the chat to come through. So if you don't see chat right away, come back tomorrow and check it out. Thank you, you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Now go foil. Go foil everything in sight. Bye. <laughs>